Uh oh. Subscribe, subscribe, You keep it hot 24 7. You are now inside Sonetta Studios, the House of Consciousness production, Black News presentation. Man, man, oh man, you already know what it is. Peace and black power, family. How y'all doing today? Beautiful day outside in Harlem. You already know what it is. It's going down tonight. I got black Jesus minister going up against the gorilla Hebrew. One of the top Hebrews that I fuck with, that I love. Uh, gorilla Hebrew, Captain Tazariak, Daniel, Allah, Hashal. To me, these are the real brothers that, that I call Hebrew Israelites. So that's why I always make a distinction when I be going in on Hebrews. I consider Gorilla Hebrew Captain Tazoria, Hashar, my brother Daniel Allah, because these the brothers that's outside, that's on the pavement where you can reach out and touch them. These are not internet fucking Hebrew Israelites, okay? Like a lot of these clowns. They are internet Hebrew Israelites. That's it. They are not in the highways and the byways as the Most High tells you to be in the goddamn highways and the byways and raise your damn voice like a trumpet to reach the masses of our people. And y'all niggas are not doing that. You are internet fake ass Hebrew Israelites. And that's why I always make my distinction. I always say not all. All right. So without any further ado, I want to bring to you the gorilla Hebrew man and brother black Jesus. What's going on? Oh, praise it. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, right. shalom, brother. What's going on, Black Jesus Minister? Look here, man. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen my brother Gorilla. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man. I think we debated maybe two or three times. Yeah, two and times. I have, to, I, I, have, I have to give this brother some shine, Brother Sarletta, and let the whole world know. Out of all Israelite leaders here in the United States of America, and, anybody, and anywhere else for that matter, this is the only brother... The only leader of a Israelite camp who has never ran from a debate from Black <laughs> Jesus Minister, bro. Never <laughs> ran from me. Never huh? ran from me, bro. <laughs> <coughs> so what you saying, Captain Cesar? I ran from you, brother. Oh, uh, brother, you already know. You know that better than I do. So I never. <laughs> <laughs> nah, as, uh, nah. Hey, as a matter of fact, I got some words from from scary from scary ass Cesariac. Uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. let's uh -oh. get it before we get started. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Go. Here we go. Here we go. Let me. Let me uh, uh, I got a message to you, uh, uh, Chief Priest, uh, from Tazarek. So uh, it'll make this. This y'all get ready to get y'all a little chuckle and y'all a little laugh on real quick. Uh, hey yo, hold yeah. up. This ain't gonna be no disrespect or nothing. No, 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 no. This, this is ain't your, no, no talking about penises and no, all that shit. No, right? no, this is no. Please, this, is, all right. this, this is your captain talking. All right, there captain, you go. So, I don't want to hear all that shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Share my screen, brother. Make it. Share the full screen, son. Now, all right. Blow the whole thing up, man. Get all the faces off there. We we want all the spotlight to be on the captain right about now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay, now, gorilla. Here's your warning, brother. Here's your warning from the captain, Captain Tazariak. Um. So yeah, Sakari Corey, why you? Sakari Corey, why you attract your message, man? You know, I can see this shit, man. Oh, no, I can't see it. You lucky I can't see your message. You retract. I would like to see what you retracted. 
Shalom uh, to my sister, Therathazar. Can't be watching a debate late on Saga. Guerrilla Hebrew debating Black Jesus minister? That's not true. That's not true. Guerrilla Hebrew is not debating Black. I'm going to text Guerrilla Hebrew and see if he's actually debating Black Jesus minister. I'm going to call. Let me see if I can get signed in on the phone. I know it's 830, but I'm about to see if I can get signed Black Jesus on the phone. I mean, not Black Jesus. Signed in. We're going to call him early in the morning. I'm going to see if he pick up. I'm going to see. Y'all going to hear him if he pick up. I don't like, think man, I picked why you up. Call me this early in the I was asleep. Put your GPS on. So I was asleep. Oh, uh, let me see. It's ringing, y'all. We're going to see if Sonetta pick up, but it is early as hell. He might not pick up this early in the morning. Um, But no, I, I probably won't be watching a, a, a lot of nothing because, you know, I'm going to be down here, especially when all these brothers and sisters get down here, man. But let me tell you, you ever see that? You ever see that Bernie Mac? He ain't picking up. You ever see that Bernie Mac uh, stand up? And he said, you got to be in shape. You gotta be in shape when black people around. Because when you when after I dap all these brothers, you ain't gotta go to the gym. You're gonna be in shape, like because you're gonna be like boop, boop, doom, doom, boop, boop, doom. All that, all that dumb telling you, you're gonna be in shape. I can't believe Gorilla Hebrew is debating black. I don't think that's true. I'm gonna text, I'm gonna text Gorilla Hebrew right now. Let me text him. Shalom, Mike. You debating? I'm just talking about to say, Shalom, Mike. You debating Black Jesus? Shalom. Let me text him. Shalom. What happened? What happened, brother? Yeah, I, I was about to play the. the I, I actually pulled the wrong video. Oh. God uh, oh. and it was it was short it was a shorter version of this. Let me see if I can find it real quick. This is all right. Come on, we gotta go because Gorilla can't be here all night. So we gotta go, brother. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, so um let's remove your screen, remove your screen. Yes, sir. And um black Jesus minister. See, a lot of people, black Jesus minister, I know you are a force to be reckoned with. I know that, mm. but what it is is you do a lot of clowning and cursing brothers out. They'd be like, nah, I don't want to deal with them. I don't want to mess with them. But if you was to take that away from your um shit, you would be a force, though, for real, without the cursing, because you know your scriptures. You might be a little crazy sometime with it, but you know your shit. And if you just stop it with the with the shenanigans, people don't want to sit down and, and go at it with you. It's not that they running. It's not that captain is running from you. It's that he don't want to be sitting with you when you cursing him out in his face who wants to do that who would want that black jesus nobody so brother if you want strong debates like gorilla like captain like these brothers brother you gotta ship this um do something different so without any further ado i'm gonna give black jesus two minutes to open up the topic is is esau the father of the white man slash the white race so black jesus minister you got two minutes just to open up let the people know what you are here to prove. Go ahead, brother. It's on you. Uh, now, again, we didn't discuss the parameters, and my brother will be going first since I'm the champion over here on this platform. But I will go you first. You just open it up. That's all it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I got that. And I'm going to use my two minutes to respond to you. Now, brother, I came into the, into the conscious community to take no prisoners, brother, to defend the word of God, bro. Because when you dealing with brothers and sisters on social media, especially wild, wild, one West Israelites, wild, wild, one West Israelites, brothers, and brothers and sisters from the street who don't mind cursing you out, bro, I had to elevate my language and bring and fight fire with fire, brother. And I came here to this platform in the social media, and I said that I was going to become the champion debater of the country community fighting fire with fire. And yes, brother, I agree with you because I have nothing more to prove as far as being the champion of the conscious community. And yes, I agree with you. And I've spoken to many of my friends and they've spoken to me. I'm bringing the my levels down. But please, brothers and sisters, do not accuse Brother Black Jesus Minister of using vile profanities because I don't use profane language. I use strong language 
but you will never hear me say four letter words, brothers and sisters. Okay, so let's just get that straight. So I acknowledge that what you said, Sonetta. You're not the only person who said that, and I'm ready to take my game to the next level. And for the most part, my debates with Brother Hebrew have been, uh, uh, Gorilla Hebrew, have been civil. And that's going to happen tonight. So I'm good, brother. You can pass it on to my brother back there. All right, bro. Oh, no, no, no. Let, let, let me take 20 seconds. So again, brothers and sisters, the title of our debate is, Is Esau the white man, the white race? Is Esau the white man, the white race, brothers and sisters? I will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Esau is not the white man and white race, and that yours truly, Bishop Black, Jesus minister, is the number one teacher and the bishop of this Israelite movement, brothers and sisters. The takeover continues. Thank you, sir. All right. Hey, um, Black, I mean, um, Gorilla Hebrew, before I let you open up with your two minutes, let me ask you, uh... Do you subscribe to the 12 tribe chart? Yes, sir, I do. Why is every Hebrew that I talk to don't want to stand up and defend that? Will you defend that if I get someone to challenge you on the 12 tribe chart? Uh, certainly. Um, it, it would all also depend on parameters. Um, you know, the 12 tribes, Israel and their identity is all predicated you know, on biblical prophecy. So somebody, if somebody's trying to challenge that um, through some type of, uh, you know, genetic haplogroup science or something like that, that's, we're going off of biblical prophecy. So somebody who's a Bible believer, um, mm -hmm. I would debate on that. But if somebody wants to deal with, um, you know, the, the, the haplogroup and all of that type of information, that's an entirely different debate now. And, and you can't even, produce a distinct Israelite if you had that conversation. So I wouldn't do it on that premise, but from a biblical perspective and historical, certainly I, I would be willing to do that. I got you. All right. You got two minutes, my brother, to open up. Okay. Okay. First and foremost, of course, I give all praises, honor and glory to the most high God. Yahweh, I do so in the name is only begotten son of my shaq, Yahweh Shai. It's my third time um, meeting black Jesus minister in a debate. Uh, and, and to the to the earlier point um, that Sonetta was making and, and how my brother um, responded, you know, I, I've definitely seen um, growth and humility, even, you know, uh, the conversations we had leading into this debate, you know, uh, a lot of humility there. So I'm, I was really excited to, to have this debate and discuss with, with, with my brother here with no malice. Um, but tonight, uh, as Sonetta has pointed out, the, the title of the debate is, Is Esau the Father of? The white race. I want to give a special shout out to Captain Dazarak ISUBK as well, who definitely did text me at 8 30 this morning. He said, Are you debating Black Jesus Minister? Why? And I understand why he said why. But I think this debate is going to be very fruitful and very worthwhile and very edifying to the hearers thereof, the Israelites thereof. Um, and and you know, again, the, the title is Is Esau the Father of the White Race? It's very important that it's that it's titled that way because that is exactly what I venture to prove that Esau, the biblical character of Esau, is the father of the people who predominantly identify as Caucasian or the white race um, today. It's very important to understand that because uh, the Israelites had a collection of history and, and their experience in the world, and they interpreted things and they believed things, and they, they passed down a tradition. And the tradition about Esau is very important because as he's defined in the Zonovan Bible Dictionary, he figures very prominently in last time prophecies, right? So if we believe we're in these last days and we believe we're the Israelites, it's important that we know who our arch nemesis is, the Edomites, and I venture through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh to prove that with the Bible as well as with history. And I rest all praise. You you mute us. You mute us, huh? Because Black Jesus Minister came an hour late, or maybe an hour and ten minutes late. Like he do so often all the time now. He's not prompt. He have to learn how to be prompt. And when he tell me a time, he got to stick with the time. Okay. But at least he called me and let me know. So I give him kudos for that. At least he let me know. So, um, Gorilla Hebrew, you got 10 minutes in your first open, I mean, your first round to prove that, um, you know, Esau is indeed 
the white man. And can we go over uh, the rules real quick? So we have three 15 minute rounds, correct? No, no, 10 minutes because he can't be here that long. 10 minutes, uh, okay, you, you, now, you uh, wasted uh, an hour. Remember, no, no, you wasted no. okay, an hour, brother. Okay, well, let me say this real quick, Zanetta. <laughs> All right, now, brother, I am here after three resets, three resets, bro. And these three resets were on behalf of my brother, Gorilla Hebrew. I was mm -hmm. ready three times. No, 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 I was ready Sunday. It, okay, it, it well, was, well, brother, okay, well, well, bro, bro, brother uh, Hebrew, I don't know what the story is. But I'm telling you about the conversation that I had with Sonetta. No, I'm the one that oh, told okay, you I wasn't right. ready. Remember? Okay, that's right. I'm sorry, Brother Gorilla. Yeah, yeah. Sonetta uh, had had to. Uh, 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 you don't got to say all that. Don't. Oh, okay, don't I got you. I got you. Bro. Yeah. Right, so, so, so in other words, bro, let's just keep that real. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So uh, we had to reset because of situations. I'm not complaining, brother. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Fifteen so, minutes. So, just, so, just kill it. So, so, so if you don't need the, I was prepared for fifteen minutes. Stop, now, stop, don't... stop, Jesus, stop. We doing 15 minutes, brother. 15 minutes of two rounds. No, I said 15 minutes. All right, of three 15 rounds, minutes bro. of three rounds. Go ahead, um, Gorilla Thank Hebrew. You, don't cut his time no more. Let him go. Thank you, brother. All right. So you All got right, three up. 15 minutes, and we're gonna start the clock when you're ready. All right, I got my I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Black Jesus minister starting this damn crying already, man. <laughs> uh so hold on, brother. You know, I love you, brother. But you're going to stop being biased right now, bro. You I'm not biased, bro. Brother, we ain't even start yet. Bro, excuse me, bro. You <laughs> you going to sit up here and ask me to be nice. You be nice, too, all right? All right, all right. I'm sorry, my brother. Thank you very much, sir. I love you, brother. I love I you. I love you, too. <laughs> all right. We got 15 minutes for the first round. Gorilla Hebrew is on you. When you're ready, the time will start. Your screen is showing. Okay. All praise. So, again... I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, do so in the name of his only begotten Son, who the world calls Christ, Hamashiach, Yahweh, Shai. I also give honors to my brother, uh, elder brother, Saad Netter. Um, Of course, the topic of tonight's debate is, is Esau the father of the white race? Very important that we stay on topic today. First slide. A picture is worth a thousand words. You are looking at one of the deities of Edom. Typically, the typical practice of people of the ancient Near East was to fashion deities after the ethnic group that worshipped them. To prove that, let's refer to scripture. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them the corruption of life, for neither were they from the beginning uh, uh, for neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. For by the vainglory of men, they entered into the world. And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he hath made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as a God, which was then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. So we see here a reference to the inception of idolatry in the book of wisdom of Solomon. And it's of a man honoring his child and deifying it and turning his child into a God and made the people that were subject to him worship them. Again, this is all to establish the fact that that's what the people of the ancient Near East did. They would fashion idols after prominent people and then turn them into gods. So here we see one of the gods of Edom. I'm going to help y'all out so we can see what this resembles, this god of Edom, Quaz. Look at this. This Edomite goddess, Quaz, looks exactly like these two white women at a picture. I mean, just look. Everybody, again, remember, a picture is worth a thousand words. Just take a look at that, right? I mean, really, I could close. I, don't, I, I could. I'm not going to, but I could see the rest of my 15 minutes right here, right now. It's very clear that these people worship this goddess that was fashioned after these people. And look what this damn statue looks like, right? Well, let's keep going. Another Edomite statue. Somebody tell me, I need a one in the chat if this white boy looked like Professor Snape, if this is an accurate side-by-side. -side. Can I see if I get some ones in the chat, if this is an accurate, if this, this statue of this Edomite, as you see the title of this statue, New light on the Edomites. Give me a one in this chat if that white boy don't look, or that statue don't look exactly like Professor Snape. 
Ooh, we. <laughs> That's a lot of ones in the chat. Salakia. Let me get back to it. That's that's clear. That's clear. All praises. Let's keep going. Excuse me for one minute. I got your time on pause. Yes, sir. If any one of y'all need to tell me to stop the time, let me know. Stop the time. I need to hold the time. And you yes, got sir. it. All right. Continue. Okay, all, continue. All praises to water. Let's keep going. Ryan, this section of the debate is going to be called the evolution of the Edomite identity. Okay, because we know that there's not a group of people that's walking around the earth in 2022 saying, hey, we're the Edomites, right? This identity of these people has evolved, right? Let's see how it has evolved with scripture and history. First Samuel 15 and 8. And he took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. See what I have underlined here? Agag. That's important. Agag is king of the Amalekites. Follow along. Genesis 36, 10 to 12. These are the names of the sons of Esau. Eliphaz, right? The son of Adah, the wife of Esau. Reuel, the son of Bashamoth, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz, remember Eliphaz is the son of Esau, were Teman. Remember that name, Teman. Omar. Zepho, remember the name Zepho, and Gatam and Kanaz. And Timna was the concubine to Eliaphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliaphaz Amalek. So following along, Agag is the name of a man who was king of the Amalekites. Amalek is the grandson of the man named Esau, right? Let's go now to the book of Esther 3 and 1. After these things did uh, Asuras promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. Right? So now we see that this man, Haman, is a descendant of Agag, who is a descendant of Amalek, who is a descendant of Esau. We go to Strong's H49. It says an Agagite is a descendant of Agag. Again, Agag the king of the Amalekites, which is a tribe of the Edomites, direct descendants of Esau. Now we're going to the book of additions to Esther 16 and 10. For Amon, a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha. So here we see the same Haman, the son of Hamadatha, who was previously identified as an Agagite, is now being identified as a Macedonian. That's important. A Macedonian, right? Let's go now to 1 Maccabees 1 and 1. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian. So we're seeing here Alexander the Great, his father is called a Macedonian. This Edomite, Haman, is also being called a Macedonian. I'm going to start back at the top of 1 Maccabees 1 and 1. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, that's important, remember that word Chittim too, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. So we see how this man, Alexander, who came from his father in Macedon, conquered Greece and then conquered the known world at that time. But the Macedonians are also being identified with the Edomites, and we see that in addition to Exodus 16 and 10, right? So here we see a direct line from the man Esau to Alexander the Great, a clear white man. All of history agrees that's a white. That is the first white man to enter into power. That's why they call him the Great. He's the first great white man in the history on the face of the earth. Everybody knows that. And we just established biblically. And our brother, Black Jesus Minister, does certainly, emphatically believe in the Holy Bible. We just established biblically a direct lineage from the man Esau to a known white man, Alexander. Right? Let's keep going. And if you don't believe this, just take a look at Alexander. Alexander the Great and his father were of the Argaid dynasty. The Argaid dynasty was also known as the Timani dynasty. There's that white boy right there, Alexander. Why is it important to know that the dynasty that Alexander and his father were a part of was also called the Timonid dynasty? Let's see. 
The team in Eat Dynasty, the term team in Eat is a linguistic evolution of Temanite, meaning descendant of Teman. Who is Teman? Genesis 36, 10 to 11. We're going back. We already read this. We're going to hit it again. These are the names of Esau's sons. Iliaphaz, the son of Adah, his wife of Esau. Reuel, the son of Bashamoth, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Iliphaz were Teman. Teman is one of the grandsons of Esau. So the name of the dynasty that Alexander and his father established in the earth is named after the grandson of Esau. And we know Philip and Alexander were white people. What are we, why are we even here? So I, again, I could. I'm not going to. I could concede the rest of my time here. Debate over. Good luck refuting this information. You got your work cut out for you tonight, my beloved brother, Black Jesus. Minister. Let's keep going, right? So we see two very clear links from Alexander the Great, a white man, and his entire white dynasty, which gave way to white rule on the earth to Esau and Edom. Direct lineage here, biblically attested to and historically attested to when you look into the Argaid and the Timene dynasty, right? Let's keep going. Now we're going to the Edoni, right? The Edons, Edonians, or Edoni were a Threshian people. That's important. Threshian people who dwelt mostly between the Nestus and the Stranum rivers in southern Trace, but also dwelt west of Stranum, at least as far as the Axios. You know where the Axios is? In Macedonia. So the Edoni people also come out of Macedon. Interesting. Edoni. Edom, that's close, right? Let's keep going. Now, they said there are Threshian people. Here are the Threshians. Just like the Edomite archaeology and pottery that we demonstrated, these are very clearly white or so-called Caucasian people. And big up to my brother, right? Big up to my brother, an uh, elder scholar, Anka Keck, the real black atheist, because he taught me a very important lesson as, as I was initially introduced to this community. And that was nothing trumps the pottery and the archaeology. We're demonstrating the Edomite pottery and archaeology as clearly being Caucasian people. Now we're going to the Threshians, right, who are called the Edenai people. And they clearly are a Caucasian or a so-called white people. You can't trump the archaeology, brother. Let's keep going. Why are they called Edoni and not Edom, right? What could be more American than amber waves of grain? Yet our dictionaries acknowledge that amber comes from the Arabic anbar, a slight change of nose made sounds from N to M. In Hebrew, we can see the shape of the nose in the letter nun. In the graphic for the letter mem, which is the M or the ma, right, we can see the lip and mouthful of required air behind the nose to make the mem sound. There are many unacknowledged none words that gave us English N words, meaning there are words that came from the Hebrew language that had an N in it or an M in it. And by the time it got to English, the N and or the M changed. They switched with each other. Four minutes, four minutes. Thank you, brother. Uh, including the elm tree from the Elan or the shade tree in the Hebrew or the moron from the nar or youth, just as the Greek morals foolish developed from moral child, a foolish adult in Yiddish accused of nar, right? But it went from the word nar to mar, moron, right? Now let's look at mem words that gave us English in words. While most mommy words of the world are forms of ima, mother, the Eskimo, Hungarian, and Turkish moms are in words so this is just showing you how especially when you're dealing with the hebrew language that letter n and m are interchangeable especially as you deal with a, a levistic uh, not a levistic a linguistic morphology over the course of time that's how the edomites or the edomi right became the edoni as they moved into europe right gonna keep going right let's talk about the romans or the latins First Maccabees 1 and 1, again, remember, I said this is going to be an important verse, right? And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim or Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece. This is all important. Why? Because according to the Josephine, which is an Israelite historical book, 
Kittim ended up appointing Zepho, son of Eliphaz, and grandson of Esau as their king, with the title of Janus Saturnus. The first king of Rome, Romulus, is made in this account to be a distant successor of this lineage. Again, this is important because according to the Hebrew Israelite history, the history of the Israelites who lived in antiquity, they said that Zepho, Esau's grandson, was made king of Kittim. Then we see Alexander, a Macedonian, related to Haman, the Macedonian or Agagai, an Edomite, comes out of the land of Kittim. So we see a clear historical link between the Edomites leaving Edom and going into Kittim and then moving into the rest of mainland Europe. We're seeing this with the Bible, and we're seeing this with, with contemporary historical sources. The Latins, right? Because we know the original tribe of Rome, of the Romans, were Latin, right? The Latins were an Italic tribe, which included the early inhabitants of the city of Rome. So we get the Latin language, right? Latini, which is the, the root word, originally meant men of the plain. That's interesting. Latini, the Latins, the original people of Rome, right? Or the early people of Rome. Their name means men of the plain. Interesting. Genesis 25 and 27. And the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. We look at that word. One minute. Field. Beautiful. We look at that word for field in the Hebrew. It's Strong's 87704. And it means field, land, or plain. So according to the Bible, Esau is a man of the plain. According to etymology, the Latins, the people who founded Rome, are called men of the plain. These same people, according to the Israelite history, descend from Romulus, the founder of Rome, descends directly from Esau's grandson, Zepho. So again, we've clearly outlined the Edomite origins, biblically and historically, of both Rome and Greece, well-known white kingdoms and empires, right? So clearly, Esau is the father of the white race. With that, I give all praises, and I rest this round. <laughs> All right, family. Beautiful, beautiful, powerful opening from my brother. Powerful, powerful opening. All right, family. Um, Black Jesus Minister, you're up. Let's see your face. Let's see your face, brother. Come on, turn on that camera, Black Jesus. Turn. There you go. There go, my brother. And so right now, family, I want y'all to know that Sarnetta Cash app is working. If you feel that I deserve a little something, you already know what it is, man. Show your love and show your support, and we're going to keep doing this. Black Jesus Minister, it's on you, beloved. You got 15 minutes in this round. The time will start when you start. Unmute yourself first. Yeah, let me uh, share my screen. and Share uh, your screen. And pull up the scripture, then you can start my time. All right, let's see here. Share screen. <clears throat> all righty all righty uh let's go right there let's go right here can you see my screen brother i see your screen once again family if you have any problem finding my cash app is pinned at the top at, at the top of the cash page all right so black jesus minister we're going to start your time right now and we're going to show your screen here's your time so you can see it all right. Well, I'm not looking at that, so I trust you, brother. All, all right, right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We don't want to go through all that. I trust you, brother. I know you do, but we want to make sure this thing is going to be right. Your time is starting now, and Thank your you screen much. is up, brother. All right. Thank you very much. Let's go. All right, brothers and sisters, let's start at Genesis 25. We just heard from our brother, Gorilla Hebrew, a bunch of false equivalencies and false associated, made up, put together, hobbled together, so-called evidence, y'all. This is shameful. But, again, we are dealing with the conscious community, all right? And I love y'all. And I am here to elevate you all and to educate you all. And since Brother Gorilla Hebrew and I are Bible believers, why didn't my brother start with the Bible? Why didn't you start with the story of Esau? that you all blatantly uh, 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 teach each other over and over 
that Esau is the white race according to the Bible. Genesis 25. And the word white and the color white is not even mentioned anywhere in here when it describes Esau's physical appearance. So brothers and sisters, the smoke and mirrors uh, is what my brother presented to you all. And he's going to continue to do that. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to the word of God, chief priest. Brothers and sisters, here, here we have right here, uh, Genesis 25. And I'm going to go down to about, uh, let's see here, Genesis 25 uh, and 25 and 22 and, and 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. 22. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Verse 23, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people, two manner of people, not races of people, chief priest, not races of people, because the word of God said that Abraham would ultimately be the father of many nations. And that's what we see throughout the Bible when people would have children, their children would go out and start nations. When we talk about ancient times and ancient biblical times, that doesn't mean different races. You all don't see the word race here at all. It says manner of people. Manner is talking about how people behave, their characteristics, nothing about their phenotype. But you all teach phenotype, which is a lie and which is, 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 is ignorance, chief priest. Not that I'm calling you a liar, but, the, but if it's not the truth, it's a lie. And it's dumbing down our people, sir. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Look at verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Y'all see this? Now, how many times have chief priests and many other one West Israelites have taught you that Esau came out red and red all over and that red also is the same, means white? How many times has my brother been guilty of that? And how many times have you all believed that and allowed that to go in one ear and not the other because certainly it must not have registered in your brain? Red and white are two completely different colors. But we got all of you all over the world, global Israelites, saying that Esau is white man, and the word white is not even in here. Chief priests, uh, Israelites all over the world, because that's why I'm the bishop. That's why I'm taking over, brother, to raise you brother's intelligence and to bring truth to scripture and to your understanding that is clearly written here in the word of God. And the first came out red, not white, Chief priest, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now, did it say his skin was red, uh, chief priest, son of the family all over the world? No, it said his hair was red all over, not his skin. His skin is not even mentioned here. Now, we know you all somehow, uh, 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 with, with whatever kind of disability that you have, you interpret red as white. I don't know how you do that. So when chief priests come back here, you can try to explain to us how do you interpret red as being white, sir? And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. His hair was red and he was hairy, not his skin, y'all, which is clearly written here. Nothing about his skin color. It said his hair was red all over like a hairy garment. Verse 26, let's keep reading. And after that, his brother out, I'm sorry, verse 26, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on his Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old, and when she bare them, verse 27, the boys grew, and Esau was, cunning, uh, was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in the tents. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, uh, now look at verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because 
he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Verse 29, and Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field and was faint. Look at verse 30, y'all. Pay close attention to verse 30, priest, a uh, 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 chief priest. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, red pottage. Do y'all see red pottage right here? Do you see that, chief priest? Red pottage. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, uh, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Whose name was called Edom? Esau then's name was called, was called Edom, which stands for red. And what type of red are we talking about? It's not talking about his hair, his his his, his red hair, because his name uh, when he was born was called what? Esau. And Esau may have been his name because of his red hair, maybe, but certainly it was not because of red skin. Look at verse 25. He, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. His hair was red. It didn't mention his skin. And his name definitely didn't have nothing to do with red because we're reading exactly why the red was associated with his name. And was it in relationship to his skin color? Was it in relationship to his hair? No, because if that was the case, he would have been called Edom in verse 25. Esau would have been called Edom in verse 25, y'all. But no, he was called Esau. And so his name was changed to Edom because of what being red? Was it because of his red hair? Was it because of his red skin? Let's read the word of God and believe the word of God, chief priest. What does it say, y'all? Verse 30, and Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee with that same red pottage, for I am faint. And do y'all, this is why he was called Edom, y'all. Therefore was his name called Edom. Did y'all see that? Why was Esau called uh, 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 Edom, uh, chief priest? Why was Esau called Edom, chief priest? And to all Israelites all over the world, he was called Edom because of the what, y'all? The red pottage. My God, chief priest. Brother, brother, chief priest, uh, uh, I want you to sign up, brother for my class at the end of this debate, bro. You hear me? And I want you to sit at my feet, brother, as I unravel all of the false, uh, wild, uh, very uh, profane and ignorant information, brother, that has been fed to you because I see you as a victim. You're a great man. You're a great brother. But you're just a victim of jailhouse scholarship. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about your teachers. And I'm going back to the original, OK? So this is not about you, brother. Jailhouse scholarship has no place in the black community and the conscious community, brothers and sisters. Okay. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day, uh, verse 33. And he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils and did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So brother chief priest, now you see where the red came from. It didn't come from his hair color. Didn't come from his, his, his skin color, which never, never said he was white and never said that uh, he was red by his skin. It said his hair was red. We now see that he was called Edom which memorialized, which memorialized him selling his birthright for what? Brothers and sisters all over the world. For what Israel all over the world? For what reason Israel all over the world? For a red pottage, my God. Somebody got, to, somebody got to start doing some apologizing and some repenting for this severe mistake and ignorance, brothers and sisters, okay? Now, uh, let's keep it moving. 
Let's see. Where are we going now? I'm not going to numbers. Uh, I think I, I okay. I, I, I think I will go to, should I go to numbers? Or should I go over here? Ew, Lord. Mm, I, I think, let me, let me hold back. Let me hold back. All right, brothers and sisters. Four minutes, four minutes. Thank you so much, Sarnetta. Thank you so much, bro. I think I will go into this. Let me go into this, y'all. Let's find out who the real white man is, y'all. This ain't, it ain't no Esau. Who was who was who was called red after red potted? Not no red skin or white skin like these one rest Israelites have taught you. Okay, let's go right here to the book of Numbers. Look at uh book of Numbers and verse 10 in chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. Look at verse 10, y'all. This is about uh, uh Moses' sister being cursed with leprosy because she was upset that Moses was marrying a Hamite Ethiopian woman and God paid her a personal visit to approve of this marriage and cursed her for being angry with Moses marrying a Hamite Ethiopian woman and what does verse 10 say and the cloud departed off the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. What color was she, chief priest? Uh, Israel, all over the world, what color was she? Was she turned red, like your teachers have told you, and, 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 and then told you that red happens to be white? What kind of madness is that, brothers and sisters? What is wrong with y'all brain cells in 2022? The information age. My God, brothers and sisters. And the, and Miriam was cursed with leprosy, and she was turned red? Red? No, she was turned white. Let's keep it moving. Let's go to... uh uh. Did I have that? Did I have that about? You know what, guys? I think I, I thought I had that scripture, and I may have it, but I'll, I'll come back to it. But brothers and sisters, uh, those of you who, who, who remember, when Moses uh, was was in the conversation with God, uh, God instructed Moses to show his power to stick his hand in his bosom, and when Moses stuck his hand in his bosom and then pulled it out, Moses' hand was turned what color, chief priest? What color, Israel, all over the world? Was it turned red or was it turned white, chief priest? His hand was turned white. He lost his color, just as Miriam lost her color. And what? Aaron prayed for Miriam, and God forgave her and returned to her her color. One minute. And now we saw in Moses, uh, 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 he, when he pulled his hand out of his bosom, his hand was turned white. And then God told him to stick his hand back in his bosom and he pulled it out and his color was restored to him. So we saw a curse of color with two prominent individuals, Moses and, uh, 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 and, and Miriam. And the curse was not red. The curse was white, brothers and sisters. Okay. It was white, not red. We're going to stop this embarrassment. We're going to stop being an embarrassment to the entire world talking about Esau, who was never red and most likely was a man of color, of serious color, but he had red hair. All of a sudden, you're going to sit up here and say that this man is white and you're going to turn red and you're going to, you're going to get confused with the color red and white. You <laughs> My God. All right, beautiful, beautiful comeback, Black Jesus Minister. Let me say to the chat real quick, um, and to the people in the chat, I see we got a lot of bias going on. Y'all always accuse me of bias. I think uh Black Jesus Minister rebuttal on um, spot um round. And it was it was the first round, but I think he came back strong and y'all not showing no love. I don't know what that's all about. But um, he came back strong in response to Gorilla Hebrew. And another thing, for all my moderators, if anybody disrespects Gorilla Hebrew mother, 
in my chat, block them. Don't give them a warning. Just block them. That's it. Because I've seen some disparaging comments going up. And so if anybody do that, just block their ass and get them out of here. So um, my brother, Gorilla Hebrew, second round is on you, brother. The time will start when you're ready. Okay, yeah, I don't need my screen shared yet. I'm, I'm going to respond to some of the stuff, then I'm going to get back to my presentation. All right, um, Black Jesus, move your, all right, there you go. Are you ready? All right. Yes, sir, I'm ready. Time will start. All right, all praises again to you, Howard Bosch, Jimmy Howard Shot. Man, uh, this is so reminiscent of my debate with Garfield, um, as I knew it would be. And what do I mean by that? I called my debate with Garfield the night of the scarecrow. And the reason why I called it is because I knew that Garfield was going to spend his time attacking Strong Man. And shout out to Garfield. I love you, brother. And in that same exact fashion, our brother Black Jesus Minister is attacking the strong man. Who said, did I introduce anything about Esau's color into this equation? My beloved brother Sonetta put a title on this debate is, is Esau the father of the white race? The topic of tonight's debate is not what color was Esau when he came out of the womb. I could go into that, and I will momentarily, right? But Esau could be as black as night when he came out of the womb. It does not change that he is the father of the white race. No matter who you are in the world, you can be Afrocentric, you can be into Kemet, you can be into the nation of Islam, you could be a Bible believer. If you're a Bible believer and you reject that Esau is the father of the white race, you're going to say, well, it was probably Japheth, right? A lot of people believe that, right? We have people like the Nation of Islam that talk about Yaqub, the big head scientist, right? Uh, but no matter who you are, you believe and you understand that the white man came from a black man, period. At some point in time, by some course of action, the original man created the white man, right? He either was a degenerate, a mutant, a deliberate creation, or something to that effect. But the black man invented, created, birthed the white man at some point in time. So it doesn't matter pursuant to the title of this debate, what color Esau was. It matters what his descendants became. And in my first round, I historically and scripturally laid that out and demonstrated that expertly through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. I knew this man was going to be caught up on color and not debate the title. Here's the problem. He lied. He said, these guys tell you red means white when red is white. and I mean, when red is red and white is white. We didn't tell you that red means white. That's not what we teach. We teach that white people call themselves white, but they aren't white. So I never mentioned my mother. Big up to my mother out there. Who watches the video? Last time I see my mother, she was about red as a cherry, right? But she's a so-called white woman. I've never seen her look white. She's red. That's what these people are. They sit out there in that sun. They, they get terms put on them like redneck. <laughs> They're not this color as this paper. We all know that. So we're not, we don't tell anybody that red means white. We're telling you that they call themselves white and they call people black who wear shades of brown. Nobody's black and nobody's white. Unless, of course, a black person becomes an albino as you demonstrated, which has absolutely nothing to do with tonight's debate topic whatsoever. So I don't know why you talked about that, right? I pause your time. I pause your time for a minute. Black Jesus Minister, can you please come in the room? The people would like to see the expression on your face as he dropped the information. Same with our Gorilla Hebrew. You know cameras should be on. There you go, brother. We ain't playing no hide and seek here. All right, go ahead, our Gorilla. All praises. So, yeah, so as it says here, um, just like he says, uh, he went into Genesis 25 and said, it don't say white nowhere in there. In Revelations 1, it don't call Jesus black either, but his name is still Black Jesus Minister. Show me the Bible calling Jesus black. It never happens, but your name is Black Jesus Minister. Why can you do that if the Bible never called Jesus black? Because you make a deduction predicated upon how he's being described contextually and understanding in the modern context he would be identified as a black man. We do the same thing in Genesis 25. How are we having one without the other? Contradiction. We're going to move on. Um, also, just to take my notes, right? Um, now, he, he made an interesting point. He said the Bible said his hair was red. Let's read the Bible, y'all. Let's read the Bible. Um, and it's Genesis 25 and 25. And it says, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. What did it say his hair was red? 
It's describing him being red and it's giving an analogy on what the shade of red he was was like, like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Right. And they and they called his name Esau. So in under, understanding that um, he totally lied on multiple occasions or just was sadly mistaken. And it's unfortunate, but I, I need to share my screen again. Now, let me get back into my presentation because I'm going to address this whole color thing, which I knew he would go to. Um, no problem at all. Right. So, again, what we just read in Genesis 25 was red all over like a hairy garment. So it's giving us a reference for the shade of red. What we have to remember is in the Hebrew language, there's one word for red. Right. But we know there's over 50 different shades of the color red. So if there's one word for red in the Hebrew, but there's 50 different shades for the color red, how do we know what shade of red is being referred to in any particular instance? And it's very simple. We look at the context clues. We have a context clue in Genesis 25 and 25, and that's like a hairy garment. We look at the first hairy garment we see in the scriptures that's red. And it's the ram skin that covers the tabernacle. Right. The ram skin dyed red. Now, this is a computer generated rendition of the ram skin. And we see what color red that is. And that's important. We're going to go into the science of how they dyed hairy garments red. Right. How did ram skin turn that color? It had to be dyed. What was it dyed with? Kermes dye. Kermes is a red dye derived from the dried bodies of a female of a scale insect in the genus of Kermes, primarily Kermes vermilio. The insects living on the sap of certain trees, the Kermes insect is found throughout the Levant and Mediterranean, namely in the oak trees in northern Israel. This is what that dye looks like. You see that red? That's a blood red. So when it described Esau when he came out like a hairy garment, like a hairy garment that was dyed red. What did they use to dye hairy garments red? Blood. Right? So what color was Esau when he came out? Blood red. Let's keep going. Esau at birth, Genesis 25, 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. According to About Kids Health, at birth, Caucasian babies are dull red in color. And as we can see through the visual aid, red, these white babies coming out the womb in their actual color is red. They're not white at all. Very, very, very simple, right? Here's another one, another picture, because some people, they like to utilize, oh, Ruddy, David was Ruddy. He may use that in his next round. We'll see. Oh, you got Ruddy people. Okay, that's fine. White people are Ruddy, too. This is a Ruddy white man. You see him? Look at Doshi. Look how red he is. White people, they get ready too, right? So I just I just need everybody to understand that. I'm going to get back into, well, let me switch over so I'm going to um, share my other presentation. Let me know if you want me to just hold the time. Yeah, hold the time one second. All right, you have seven minutes and um 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Is this up? Yeah, share, share this one now. All right, you up and running. Okay, the water. Time All is right, on. Go. Okay, boom. So we went into this, how um, the original Romans, according to our history, came out of Zepho, one of Esau's grandsons, right? They called themselves the Latin people. Latin means men of the plain. Esau was called a man of the plain in scripture, right? Which he said, I didn't go to scripture, but I, I went to scripture. And I also went to history. I also went to archaeology because um, you need to couple these things together, right? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemi Shai, right? Let's keep going. The Romans. Edom appears, right? This is via Encyclopedia Judaica. Anybody can look this up. Anybody, and I got my source. Anybody if, who's been watching the presentation can see my sources, right? Edom appears sometimes in the Agadah as referring to the Romans. Edom, the Romans. We know the Romans were white people. Edom, right? Boom. Who are identified with them. In the Bible, Edom is described as the eternal enemy of Israel who always oppressed Israel. Now, if we're the Israelites and Edom is always oppressing us, Right. Our greatest oppressor throughout the history of time. We know who that is. We know what the last 500 years has looked like. So why would we not identify these people as the Edomites? Right. Because that's how the Israelites have always identified the Edomites. Keep going. In addition, the fact that Rome, like Edom, had destroyed the temple 
The similarity to Edom and compared to a pig with Rome, for whom the pig, or whom more correctly the soul, was the most important symbol. The Romans loved symbolizing the pig, but also something else. The illusions of Edom dwelling on high like an eagle, and the fact that the eagle too was an important Roman symbol, and perhaps finally even the similarity to the name Rome and Romans in several verses that speak of Edom, Seir, and Esau. All these apparently combined to cause the application to Rome of the biblical references to Edom, the eternal enemy of Israel. This is via the Encyclopedia Judaica. The interpretation and the way that the Israelites have always viewed Rome as they are Edomites. And we know damn good and well the Israelites are people of color and the Romans are white people. We know that, right? Keep going. At the end of the uh, Tinatic period and still more in the Amoric the identification became very widespread and that the overwhelming majority of homilies about Edom, meaning what the Israelites were writing about Edom, speak explicitly of Rome. Thus, it was stated that Rome was founded by the children of Esau. Let's keep going. The Jews reckon this is a book called The History, The People That History Forgot. The Jews reckon that many of the Edomites migrated to Rome to understand this matter from the Jewish point of view. A few historical indications have to be taken into account. It was reckoned that in early times, even before the time of David, descendants of the Edomites or a portion of them moved from their area south and east of Jerusalem into the north where they ex expanded and established trading colonies. More historical references to the Edomites leaving Edom and going and assuming and taking over Europe. Then they wrote a whole book called the Roman Empire, the Empire in, of the Edomite. This was in 1853, right? Over a century ago, it was written. And a white man wrote this, identifying himself and his people with the Edomites, man. Right. Let's keep going. Prophecy. One of the most important things in this world is prophecy because it is the direct word of God. And you only can understand it through the spirit and power of Yahweh. So let's keep going. Edom in prophecy. Jeremiah 49 and 8 it says, turn and flee. Hide in deep caves, you people of the Dan. For when I bring disaster on Edom, I will punish you, too. The Edomites left their land to live in caves. Gen uh, Job 30 and 5 to 6. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks, showing you that people chased the Edomites out of their land into caves. Away. What caves? We know what caves. We know where the cave people come from. The Caucasus foot hills of Georgia, Russia. We all know that. Ezekiel 36 and 5. Now watch this. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, the Edomites, Esau, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Biblical prophecy says whoever is in the land of Israel now are the Edomites and what people are controlling. Those is three minutes. Appreciate you, brother. Those Israeli people that are walking around and dominating Israel right now, what are they? Oh, they are white people. <laughs> right? Again, the biblical prophecy says whoever would be in Edom now, I mean in Israel now, are the Edomites. The Edomites appointed God's land into their hand. We know 1948 what happened, and they possessed it ever since. So to deny that those people, that white people are the Edomites, is to blatantly deny the word of God, blatantly deny biblical prophecy, or simply the Holy Spirit ain't dealing with you so you can't see, you don't have eyes to see it, you can't understand it, right? Let's keep going. Job 9 and 24 says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Remember that word wicked. Psalms 37 and 35 says, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. So now we see the wicked is in control of the earth and the wicked power is so great. He spread himself all over the earth. 
Then we see here Malachi 1 and 4, whereas Edom saith we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh hath indignation forever. So Esau is synonymous here with wickedness as we see in Malachi 1 and 4. We also see the wicked control the world and the wicked have spread themselves throughout the whole world. What people are the most dominant and have been the most dominant and had the most control and spread themselves throughout the world? Who has colonized every single continent in the world, right? Whoever that is would have to be the Edomite. And we know what the white man has done. We know what he's done over here to the Americas. You know, English, French, uh, French, Spanish or three of the top five languages spoke in this whole world. How was that spread? When you take a look at that map and you look how small Britain is and you look how small France is and you look how small Spain is and you understand that damn near the whole world speaks one of those three languages. That's because the wicked is in great power and have spread themselves like a green bay tree and the wicked is identified as the Edomite. So again, to neglect, to deny that the Edomite is emphatically the white race is to deny blatant, clear, plain, biblical prophecy in the word of God. It's evident when you think about the wicked and great power spreading himself like a green bay tree. Who went down and turned Australia into a white land? Who turned New Zealand into a white land? Who turned America, Argentina, South Africa? Who colonized China and turned it into Hong Kong? the white man. He spread himself all over this world and he's wicked. He's in great power. The earth has been given into his hand and the Edomites are called the wicked. How are we denying this at this point? Black Jesus minister, do me a favor. I need you to go into these history and to the prophecy that I've referenced over the course of this last 30 minutes and refute something, please. Cause you ain't refuted a damn thing. My brother with that, I give all praises to you. How about shimmy? I'll shy yield the rest of my rap. <laughs> Damn, told y'all this shit right here. Woo! Gorilla, I mean, Gorilla and Black Jesus are two champions up in here. Black Jesus don't run from nobody, and Gorilla Hebrew damn sure don't run from nobody. But when you call out a brother like Gorilla Hebrew, you calling out one of the best, bro. And so Black Jesus Minister, it's on you, beloved, and you got 15 minutes, and the time will start when you start, brother. Unmute yourself. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. And you can start my time when I start talking. Yes, sir. All righty. All right. You can take my face off of here and, and share the entire I screen, you. brother. I got you. Your time starts. Okay. Don't, don't start it yet. Wait till I finish. Wait till I start talking. Okay. Wait till I start talking. Start talking. Hold on, I'm trying to hit a, hit a few more buttons, brother. Hold tight. All right, do you see my screen, brother? I see your screen. All right, thank you. You can start my time right now. All right, here we go. Brothers and sisters, my brother, our brother, chief priest, Gorilla Hebrew, has been reduced to nothing but theatrics, brothers and sisters. Uh, brother, you missed your calling, bro. You should have been an actor, bro. You should have been a stage actor, <laughs> uh, 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 Brother Gorilla Hebrew. That was beautiful, bro. And not one time did you relay any factual, biblical, or scientific information, brother. Again, you have been reduced, as you have started out with, more false associations and more false equivalencies there, brother. You have nothing, brother, for this debate, bro. Okay? Now, brother, I promise you, it's about to get worse. It's about to get worse, my bro. Brothers and sisters, everybody look at Genesis 10. We all just heard chief priest, Gorilla Hebrew, said them, them white Jews over there in Israel are Edom. They're Edomites. Let me say this again. We just heard, my brother, and you can't, you can't erase it, uh, chief priest, because it's recorded, bro. Them white Jews over there, those imposter Jews over there in Israel are Edomites. But what does the word of God say, chief priest? What does the word of God say? Because, see, I'm going to share with you that the white race is composed of two people, sir. The Southern Europeans and the Northern Europeans. The Southern Europeans, 
their father and their progenitor chief priest is Japhet, the eldest son of Noah, as we are reading and we're looking at our screen in Genesis 10. And we're going to find out that those white Jews in Israel that you said are Edom, we're going to find out from the word of God that know that they are the descendants of Japhet, brother, the progenitor of all European people. Let me say this again. The progenitor of all European people. The progenitor of all European people. Not Edom, not Esau, and not those white Jews in Israel today. They are descended from their father, going all the way back to Japhet as we read and confirm this in the word of God, brother. You have yet to confirm anything you've said in the word of God, brother. That is sad, man. Brothers and sisters, let's read the word of God, Genesis 10, and we're going to start at verse 2, because verse 2 is, is breaking down the genealogy of Japhet. And we're going to, and you see highlighted, one of the identities of the chief white people population that currently populate Israel today and say that they are Israel. What is the name that I have highlighted there, uh, uh, Brother Chief Priest? Do you see one of Japheth's grandsons, bro, by the name of Ashkenaz? Do you see that, Chief Priest? And are not the majority of Jews white Jews in Israel today, do they not call themselves Ashkenazi Jews, chief priest? But you just sat up here in profound ignorance that you've been stewing in for, I don't know, 10, 20 years since you so-called came into this jailhouse convict truth, okay, that told you, because I see you as a victim. You are a victim of jailhouse scholarship, chief priest. And these nutbags told you that white people are the are, are, are the uh, descendants of Esau, and you just said that the Israelites are Edom, and the Word of God says no, brother, they're Ashkenazi, descendants of Japhet. Let's read, Chief Priest. The sons of Japhet are Gomer. Did you not know that Gomer is present-day Germany? Magog and Magdai and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenazi Jews, chief priests, not Esau and Edom, sir. See, not Esau and Edom. Bro, bro, uh, to all you Israelites all over the world, you all are going to fall in line and fall in love with your bishop. I am the supreme bishop of this Israelite movement, and I'm taking it over, brothers and sisters, because I will not allow you to continue to stew in stupidity, okay, and sheer ignorance that is shameful. The entire world is laughing at the, the black Hebrews like community because of our profound ignorance. Where brother black Jesus minister is going to elevate our people. Black Jesus minister is on the scene, brothers and sisters. And the sons of Gomer were Ashkenazi Jews, chief priests, and Ripah, and Togorma. Now let's continue on. And no, no. And we'll look at verse 5. And verse 4. And the sons of Japhon, Elish, and Tarshish, and Kitchum, and Dodani. Look at verse 5. By these were the isles, by these were the isles of the Gentiles, chief priests. These white people. These Southern European people, and we're going to prove it with, with maps and science and not sitting up here putting on a theatrical performance and cobbling together all kinds of goofiness, bro. That's what you're doing tonight, Chief Priest. But that's what happens to you when you are a one West Israelite. And this is what happens when a Christian shows up on the scene, brother. You hear me? And Ecclesiastes 3, Christian homeboy. Now, verse 5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongues, after their families, in their nations. Who are the Gentiles? Our white European brothers, the descendants of Japheth. Who are the true Gentiles? Our white brothers and sisters, our European brothers and sisters, who are the descendants of Japheth. 
not Ham and not Sham. And that'll be a, a deeper discussion at another time. Let's keep it moving, Chief Priest. I hope you take your notes, bro. But if not, this lesson is being recorded, sir. Now, let's move on. Uh, brothers and sisters, let's read further a uh, 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 theological information about Japheth. And this is coming from you guys can go to uh can pull this up. You guys see the name right here. The return to glory table of nations, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. Y'all can go there right now and read along with me. And scroll all the way down and read right along with me. Japheth, Yafet, etymologies of Yafet, the name in Genesis 9 27, seems to be explained by the phrase, may God make why. Uh, and then it goes on to say, where Yafet and Yafet are represented by the same consonants, but with the different vowel points, and the root of Yafet is patak, to make why. Now, I'm not going to read all of that, y'all. Y'all can take time and read this on your own. But the, the, the most important part I want to bring to you guys, look at this. Look at his descendants right here in verse 2. I mean, in, in part 2. Look at what it says, chief priest. His descendants, 14 nations came out of Japheth. The immediate descendants of Japheth were seven in number and are represented by the nations designated Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras are roughly the Armenians, the Lydians, the Medes, the Greeks, the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks, the Tiberians, the Mush, y'all forgive me for um, uh, mispronouncing these words, the Martians, the last Tyrus, remaining still obscure, the sons of Gomer, of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Ripath, and Togarma were all settled in West Asia, track, whilst the sons of Japhon and Elish and Tarshish and Kittim and Dodanim and Rodanim occupied the Mediterranean coast and the adjacent islands. We're talking about Southern Europe, y'all. Southern Europeans. These are the first Europeans, the first white people, the Southern European white people, the original progenitor of white people, Japhet, the home and the nation of the Gentiles. Look at uh verse uh look at look at uh, uh article four guys, look at article four. And what does uh, uh, and article four gives us more detail as to who these descendants of Japhet are. And what does it say? Seven sons of Japhet. See map below. Javan is Greece. Romans, the Romans, the French, the Italians, the Spanish, the Portuguese. Oh my God. Chief priest, look at first, look at number two, Magog, or the, the or the Scythians, the Slavs, the Russians, the Bulgarians, the Bohemians, the Poles, the Slovaks, the Croatians. Number three, Magdi is the Indians, the Iranic, the Medes, the Persians, the Afghans, the Kurds. Look at verse four. Tubal, south of Black Sea. That's talking about that's south of Russia. Tiras, the, the, the Thracians, the Totans, the Tautans, the Germans, the Scandinavians, the Anglo-Saxons, the Jutes. Look at number six, Meshach, Russia. Look at Gomer, the Celtics. Brothers and sisters, these are all white European nations and white European people whose progenitor and father is Jafet chief priest? God damn, chief priest! And to all my one West Israelite brothers and sisters who have been duped and bamboozled with shameful, with shameful ignorance. But brothers, four minutes, four minutes. Thank you very much. So let's keep it moving. Let me see if I can find that map down here because I already have another map. I don't see that. Yeah, yeah, I do. Here, here's a map right there. Here's a map right here, y'all. With all those descendants, I'm not gonna go over this. I'm just I'm just letting it sit here for like three to five seconds, and then you guys can go on your own and look at this because I have a more vivid map about the same uh breakdown. Let's go, let's keep it moving, Chief Priest. Here's the table, a table of nations map, y'all, of where the sons of Noah established themselves 
after the flood. And we see here Egypt, Northeast Africa, uh, 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 Kush, Nubia, all this area here, Libya, was what? Occupied by Ham. Ham, the black African race. And Abraham and the Shemites, this is their land, y'all, according to the table of nations map. Y'all see this? Arabia is their primary homeland. Y'all see this? And I want you guys to pay close attention. Look at this red square right here. Is this red square green or is it yellow? It is green, brothers and sisters, and it is the land of Canaan. It is the land of black African people. This is Israel, which belonged to who? To Ham, because Ham is the is the, fa- the grandfather of Canaan, the original people of God, the original worshipers of El Elyon, the God of the Canaanite people. Now, let's keep it moving. And where is Japheth, chief priest? How much time I got, Sarnetta? Japheth, brothers and sisters. Let me see if I can blow up, blow up, blow up the picture. You have two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Brothers and sisters, here is Japheth. This is Southern Europe. Remember, it says that the Europeans, that the, the, the citizens of Japheth were in the isles of the Gentiles. Here is Southern Europe, and here is Japheth. Now, I don't believe Japheth. Well, the Asiatics of Japheth, I may agree with that because the Asiatics are uh, um, intermingled with Japheth. But I see Japheth being primarily Europe, but and this is Europe, y'all. And Japheth is right here, and you see all the names, all of the names of Japheth's sons and grandsons, and the islands, these islands, Tarshish, Tiras, Tavan, Rodanin, Elisha, Katin. These are the lands of Europeans and the first Europeans whose father is Japheth, chief priest. My God, man, according to the word of God, according to the tale of nations, not according to wacky ass, excuse me, one West Negro nut doctrine, brother. Jailhouse scholarship, bro. And I'm not talking about you, chief priest. I'm talking about the one West doctrine, all right? Now. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is a photo of what these Southern European people look like today and the way they look like back then. White people with a slight tan, a slight tan to themselves, slight color with dark hair and dark eyes. Do you see that, sir? Nether? Do you see this, sir? Yes, I see it. Thank you very much. These These are the Southern European people. All right, who were the direct lineage? Who were the Greeks? Who were the Romans? Not, 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 not no descendants of Edom and Esau. All right, man, told y'all, bro. Powerful, powerful comeback between these two brothers. Uh, Gorilla Hebrew, you're going into your last and final round, and yeah. then you're going to be able to rebuttal. I'm going to give y'all five minutes apiece to rebuttal each other's argument. All right? And then y'all will be able to ask each other two questions. Going back and forth. Question, 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 question. Like that. All right? So without any further ado, <coughs> Black, I mean, um, Gorilla Hebrew, and turn that camera on, brother. Why did you keep hiding, man? I, I had to walk away, son, and I'll be right okay, back. Okay, go ahead. It's on you, Gorilla Hebrew. All right, again, I give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we've watched uh, our brother Black Jesus minister do exactly everything that I knew he would do tonight. Um, I praise the Most High for foresight, for insight, etc. Um, he he mentioned the Jews who identify themselves as Ashkenazi Jews, as if them identifying or calling themselves by that name indicates that's the actual place of their origin. If you look in the New Testament, for example, who you call the world called Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, he was called Jesus of Nazareth, but he was born in Bethlehem. 
So just because he spent some time in Nazareth and people knew him for being in Nazareth, that didn't make that the actual place of his origin. So that's just one biblical reference to why that's a total straw man argument that he made, right? Or, or actually a logical fallacy, my apologies. I'll give him another one. Acts, 20, uh, Acts 2 and the fifth verse. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So the people that it's talking about here are Jews. They're Israelites. Skip it to verse 9. But it called them what? Parthians and Medes, Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and in Asia, Phygaria and Pamphylia, in Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene, the strangers of Rome. Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. It's calling these people again, Cretes, Arabians, Elamites, even Medes, which he referenced. But they're in fact Israelites. So just because it's calling these people by the name of the place where they resided does not indicate that that is the location of their ethnic origin. That again is a logical fallacy. Let's keep going. Right. He mentioned Medina. Can I, I got another one for him here. Uh, he said the only Gentiles are the, the, the descendants of Japheth. That's a lie. Let's read first Ezra 8 and 69. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of the land, nor the pollution of the Gentiles. So the people that is getting rid of the name are the Gentiles whose pollutions Israel didn't put away. To wit of the Canaanites, Hittites, Pharisites, Jebusites and the Moabites, Egyptians and the Edomites. So it just named Hamites and Shemites as Gentiles, not there was no Japhite, Japhetic people named here, but they were all named as Gentiles. So that's another point of his totally debunked through the spirit and power of Yahweh. I also want to point out how laughable it is that he just went to some website and read off it. That is not a source. That's not how sources work. I have literally presented not only scripture, not only went into the Hebrew language, but I've actually went into archaeological finds and presented that i've actually went into other historical sources and cited them other scholars and cited them not just scrolled down some website and highlighted it that's not how scholarship works and big up to house of consciousness for helping people to raise their scholarship apparently my brother bjm missed those lessons now moving forward now what's interesting is that website that he went to says that east indians are Japheth, but we know east indians are dark-skinned people so that contradicts his very point that they are white people if they make black people, dark skinned people. Right. But even worse, the map that he went to contradicted the point he made and the website he went to. If you go back and look at his map, it had Ham's land up into southern Europe, which if you actually follow the Bible, the Bible tells you that Ham, the Hamites, the Hamitic people possessed a part of Europe. But wait, he says the Southern Europeans are white people. He just put a picture of people and said they're Southern European and this is how they look like. But according to the Bible and that map he used, that is Hamite land. Explain that. I thought the Hamites were black people, the original worshipers of God. This brother has contradicted himself left and right throughout this debate. Let's get back now through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to some scholarship. I'm going to share my screen again, brother Sonnet. Share my screen again. Okay, let's go here. He mentioned the Medes and Madai. Y'all heard that, right? The Medes and Madai. So this is uh, Daniel 9 and 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, the, uh, of the seed of the Medes. This person is a literal descendant of the people of that are called the Medes or the people of Madai, which he said are Japhites, which the Bible says are Japhites, right? We go here to Strong's H074, uh, a people descended from the son of Japheth and who inhabited the territory of media. That's what a Mead is. This is the archaeology depicting the physical appearance of Darius the Mede, who was their king. Does that look like a white person? Here is a Japhite, a guaranteed, verifiable Japhite in archaeology, clearly a person of dark skin not a white person. I thought he's telling us that this is where white people come from. That damn sure don't look like a white man to me. Let's keep going. These are the Etruscans, the original people of Greece. That sure don't look like a white person to me. Let's keep going. These are the Minoans. Oh, no, my fault. The Etruscans are the original people of Italy. My fault. And these are the Minoans, the original people of Greece. This is the archaeology. These are not white people. <laughs> you can clearly see how they're depicted as dark brown skin again. 
Darius the Mead, dark brown skin. The Etruscans, dark brown skin. The Minoans, dark brown skin. One more for you. Look at this. The original Vikings up in Europe, black people. So I just went to all the places that he tried to point out on the map and superimpose a white identity and demonstrated that the earliest inhabitants of those regions were all dark brown skin people. Just because white people went and conquered Europe and assumed the identities of Europeans does not mean that that is the place of their origin. Again, he mentioned media. He also mentioned Kittim in his presentation. We have already demonstrated historically that Esau's grandson went into Kittim and became king and paved the way for more Edomites to come to the land and to the region of Kittim and later into the rest of Europe to conquer it. White people are no more from Europe than they are from America. Just because they killed and ran out the people who lived there and enslaved them does not indicate whatsoever that they are the original people from that region. It is literally asinine for you to conclude that. Let's go. I'm going to uh, switch presentations back to my main one. You got eight minutes. Yes, sir. All praises. What's my other presentation? At? Hold on. Oh, there. I put it down. Y'all will be able to vote. The poll is going to be open. <clears throat> Okay, we good, we good. All oh, praises. All right. So back to Edom and prophecy. Second Ezra 6 and 9 says, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Right? So that means that at the end of the world, the Edomites will be reigning, and then the Israelites would overcome and overtake them and begin a new world. Right? Remember that. Daniel 2 and starting at the 40th verse. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things and as iron that breaketh all these shall it in pieces and bruise and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron the kingdom shall be divided but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. So it's talking about this fourth and final kingdom that's going to rule. And it's describing it as partially strong and partially weak, right? Partially united and partially divided, right? And whereas thou sawest, oh, I read that part. Um, oh, yeah. And where thou sawest uh, iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another. I mean, they're not being united, Right. Even as iron is not mixed with clay and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So it's describing the kingdom that will be the last kingdom to rule before the Israelites overcome and under Christ and create a perpetual kingdom, right? The kingdom of God, the kingdom of Israel. All scholars agree that this fourth kingdom represents the Roman Empire, right? And we understand that the Roman Empire, now people can disagree, but the Roman Empire came back to life during the time of the Renaissance as Western Europeans rose up out of Europe and began to conquer and subdue the whole earth. We know that that occurred, right? We also know that Western Europeans are not united as they are prompt to war with each other. We take a look at what France is doing right now. They're pro-Russia. Meanwhile, the rest of Western Europe is anti-Russia as we gear into this third world's war. So that's just a demonstration of the division amongst that fourth kingdom to substantiate that the current Western European power structure is the kingdom that is being talked about in prophecy and is the kingdom in which Jesus Christ, Yahweh is coming to destroy. The interesting thing is, again, if that is in fact true and this is that last kingdom, right? then they have to be Esau because Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Let's keep going. We have to ask ourselves, if Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of the world that follows and Rome is the last empower, empire to rule before the time of the kingdom of Yahweh, again, no scholar actually disagrees with the fact that that fourth kingdom is Rome, right? Israel, wouldn't that make Rome the Edomites, right? Logical deduction, more on Edom and prophecy, right? The fourth kingdom is also described in the book of Revelation as the great red dragon, right? Revelation 12, starting at three. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. I know this all sounds great and magical and wonderful, but this is all just allegory for actual history that occurred, right? And the dragon stood before the women, woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it be born, right? Who is this child? And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. This is important because who is- Four minutes. Woman? Appreciate you. Who is, the, who is the child that was born that they tried to devour that was made to rule the world? It's Jesus Christ, it's Yahweh Shai. Well, how did this happen? I know again, this was allegorically, mystically worded, but this literally reflects history. How did this occur? In history, let's find out Matthew 2 and 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child, which is Yahweh Shai, and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be there until I bring you the word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So again, it says that they were trying to devour that child, right? This red dragon was trying to devour that child, and the child is Jesus. Well, we see Herod was trying to kill Jesus. That's important. Here's why. Despite his official status as a as a Jewish descendant of to convert of converts rather, for the rabbis Herod was not a Jew, the man that tried to kill Christ, but the archetypical Roman. So he represented Rome from the Israelite perspective. So the Israelites identified that red dragon with Rome and Herod as an agent of Rome trying to kill the baby Jesus, the baby house, the baby black Jesus, right? The archetypical Roman who occupied Jewish land, imposed his values upon the populace by force and ruthlessly killed his enemies. That's be a, a professor, Jeffrey Rubenstein, a Jewish professor. See, I actually cite actual scholastic sources. Remember that the rabbis detested him, associating him with other unstable rulers whose cruelty would become the hallmark of their ruling governments, such as Caligula and Nero. Many Jews thought of Herod as being in league with Rome, and indeed his great-grandchildren Agrippa II and Bernice opposed the Great Rebellion decades after Herod's death. The rabbi's knowledge of Herod's Idumean ancestry made it natural to connect this Roman ruler. So they, it was a natural connection of Edom and Rome and Herod with Rome. So when you see the Israelites poetically refer to the attempted assassination of the baby Jesus as Rome, a red dragon trying to eat that baby, but Herod was the individual that actually acted it out. We clearly are saying that Edom is being identified with Rome and being identified with that last kingdom to rule until the kingdom of Christ, which prophetically, according to 2nd Ezra 6, would be the Edomites, right? Keep going, extension of Romans in general with the people of Edom. Right. Again, Romans eat them. Greeks eat them. We see it interchangeably. We know the Romans and the Greeks, white people. We're going to keep going. Uh, Revelation. How much time I got? You got one minute and five seconds. One minute and five seconds. Right. So here we got Revelations 12. We see here and anybody can read this. I'm going to shorten it up for the time's sake. We got a woman who flees into the wilderness. Um, this, this dragon comes and uh, the archangel Michael fought, fights against the dragon, right? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard with a loud voice saying in heaven, now is salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. So this is the dragon that Christ is going to come and overthrow and establish his kingdom. This dragon was identified with Herod, an Edomite Roman. Right. This is the last kingdom to rule. So, again, the Edomites are said to rule before the Israelites rule. Right. And it's saying that the Romans who are synonymous with the Edomites are the ones ruling when Christ comes and conquers. So, again, to say that the Edomites are not white people, to say that Esau is not the father of the white race is to outright deny biblical prophecy. With that, I rest all praise. All right. All right, Black Jesus Minister, listen up, brother. You need to listen up. You need a knockout in this round. The chat got it nine, five, seven in favor of the chat, Gorilla Hebrew. Um, <laughs> they got you nine, four, six in favor of Gorilla Hebrew. So Black Jesus Minister is not saying you can't pull it out. 
there's always been a knockout in the last round. So, brother, you got to pull it together like I know you can. Uh, now, and, so, no, no, hold, hold so, on, let me finish. Let me finish. Don't cut me off. Hold on, bro. Don't cut me off when I'm talking, brother. I hear you. So we need a we need a powerful round from you, Black Jesus Minister. You okay, can't talk when the moderator is talking, brother. I'm giving you, I'm letting you know what's going on so you can come with the daggers. Because I'm looking <laughs> at the crowd, I'm looking at the audience, I'm looking at the chat and what everybody uh, is saying. So you need a powerful round in this round okay. for the knockout blow. Now, and you can still pull us off. I'm rooting for you. Yeah, well, so family, good, one more thing. I need everybody to go to that goddamn cash app and drop five dollars in the cash app, man. This is what I do for you. You know, I'm gonna, I ain't want to tell y'all this, but I'm speaking right now with a powerful general. I just throw some clues out there. I'm speaking, I spoke with a powerful general, I threw something out there, and the general said that he will have some time in June. And so I'm looking for June to come with the most powerful debate ever. Okay. The most powerful debate ever, taking on another powerful soldier. And I'm just saying, everybody in the building, throw $5 in the cash app for your brother. All right, Black Jesus Minister, you can say what you want to say now. You got yeah, five minutes say, in this let round. Me, you know, before you start my five, my 15 minutes, let me take 60 seconds to respond to all that splaining and all that splashing you was doing. But you don't there need you to do that, brother. Uh, brother you don't. Stop. Uh, brother, Nobody can hear you right now. Brother. Nobody can hear you. I got you on black ice. Bro. You don't need, you're not debating me. You don't brother. need to explain to me. Have some tough skin, brother. Have some tough skin. Save that energy for Gorilla Hebrew. You're going to need it. <laughs> Save brother. that shit for the Gorilla. Brother. Everybody who knows you and I and our relationship, every time I show up to debate, I'm always debating my opponent and Sarnetta, bro. And you are Yo, how the hell? Brother, what? brother, stop. You said you debated stop, me. Son, let us stop, bro. Hey, 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 people ain't stupid, bro. Okay? Now, brother, I'm going to say this to you, bro, in reference to what you said. Gorilla's teeth are all over the floor right now, bro. Uh-oh. All his teeth are all over the damn floor. And all he can do and all he has done is pull straws and suck on them. Uh -oh. That's what he's doing. Pull his straws. And sucking on straws because all his teeth are all over the floor. All right, bro. brother, get with the last round, brother. Let's Save go, all man. of that. And let's get with the last round. I it's have not, bad. I have not added on to what he's saying, brother. So now you're trying to make it look like Yo, me man, and Gorilla is jumping brains, you. Man. I didn't add nothing to none of that. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you what's going on in this like chat. Moderator and kind of keep it neutral, bro. Let's go. I am keeping it neutral. Yeah, I'm giving here, man. Stop. Listen, Stop, I'm brother. giving you a heads up on yeah, what yeah, I see in the chat. Bro. Now, if you want to pull this shit out, we need a third round knockout, Black Jesus. Bro. That's what I'm telling you. The time bro. will start when you start, brother. Let's go, y'all. Well, I swear, you funny, son, Edda, and the chat is too. Now, look here, brother. Uh, I'm going to pull up. I'm going to show my screen. Okay. Start my time when I start talking. Let me share my screen, brother. This thing was over with during the first round, second round, and this is, bro, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm just kicking my brother right now. I'm helping you pick up your kids off the <laughs> you floor, kicking bro. him? Hey, 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 the chat, my soup, my um, my chat is going up. I appreciate y'all. Everybody in there showed some love and support, and I appreciate y'all. It's moving up. I'm looking at it right now. Show some love in the chat. $5, everybody. I mean, let's go, Black Jesus. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm sharing my screen, and uh, do me a favor. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, go ahead and put my screen up. Put my screen up, bro. You got it up? Just go, brother. It's uh, like take, your okay, time started. Off. Scott, not yet, brother. Wait. Oh, man. Take off all of our faces, brother. Nothing but all my right, screen. All right, all right, all right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you very much. Brothers and sisters, when you guys Google and look up any Table of Nations map, like my brother tried to discredit the Table of Nations map that I just pulled up here, you're going to see almost the exact same thing. So, brother, Gorilla Hebrew, my dear brother, you are desperate at this point, brother. It's over, man. It was over in round one, over in round two. Bro, it, I told you it's about to get worse, man. This is bad. But I, I'm using you as an example, brother. And I thank you for your boldness to be the example tonight, bro. Okay? Now, brothers and sisters, look at the Table of Nations map. When y'all read, when we read Genesis 10, the progenitors of Japheth were who? 
This is Japhet, uh, Southern Europe. And here's Italy way over here. And here is Greece back over here somewhere. Look at these people, the descendants of Japhet. Kittin, Elisha, Rodanin, Tavon, Tiras, Tarshish, right here by Italy. The Isles, the Isles of the Gentiles, y'all. Japhet. You're going to see this exact same layout on any table of nations map that you pull up. But if you are going to be slow and if you are a liar, you're going to believe my brother Gorilla Hebrew because he knows better. He's using tactics right now because he knows some of y'all is just going to listen to what he say and you ain't going to look up nothing. And you don't care what evidence, what factual evidence black Jesus is bringing because you're biased and because you love your chief priest. I love your chief priest, too. But I love him enough to bring him the rod of correction, brothers and sisters. And that's what Black Jesus Mister is bringing tonight. An ass whooping for my brother. All right? Now, brothers and sisters, let's keep it moving. Now, these are Southern European people, the classical phenotype. Tawny, slight tan, dark hair, dark eye, Southern European people. This is probably what Japhet and his children look like, brothers and sisters. All right. And now, brother chief priest, like I told you, it's getting worse, bro. I want to take you to the second progenitor of white people, the northern European white people who happen to be blonde hair, blue eyes, and very pale skin. They, too, had a progenitor. Brother Chief Priest. And that progenitor, according to the word of God, Chief Priest, according to the word of God, Israelites all over the world, according to your bishop, your minister, your brother, is Gehazi. Gehazi, Brother Chief Priest, is the father of our blonde, blue-eyed, uh, pale, very pale-skinned white brothers and sisters, according to the bible and the word of god and we're going to back it up with genetics and science chief priest not theatrics and you sitting up here cobbling like a, a like a, a like a uh 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 like some sort of pie a, a, a peach cobbler or, or an apple cobbler pie you you've been cobbling all night bro okay that's what you've been doing bro now let's let's get the bible bro Let's find out what the word of God says, Chief Priest, and his minister, Black Jesus minister. It says right here, everybody, everybody go to 2 Kings. Everybody go to 2 Kings 5. 2 Kings 5, and I want you all to go down. I don't have time to read the whole thing about the story of Gehazi and, and who was the servant to Elijah, the prophet, who healed Naaman, who was the captain of the Syrian army, of his leprosy. And then when uh, Elijah cured him of his, of his leprosy, Gehazi ran behind Naaman. When Naaman refused, when, when uh, Elijah refused to take any money or riches for healing him, he ran behind Naaman and lied and said, oh, my master changed his mind. I'll take some of that gold. And he took that gold and hid it behind his master's back, behind his teacher's back, got uh, uh, Elijah. And then when he came back to Elijah, Elijah questioned him. And here's the story, chief priest. Gehazi, I want to hear everybody say, Gehazi is the father of white people, the Northern European, blonde hair, blue eyed, pale white people, according to the word of God. Chief priest, not Esau, not Edom, who is what his father is, as you all say, a black man, a man of color. That means Edom and Esau had a color. That's why you ran away from me saying that what? Red and white are the same color, bro. Because you know he had color. Now, let's read, brothers and sisters. Look at verse 20. But Gehazi, so now let me know when I got five minutes. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, 
the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Behold, my master hath spared name in his this Syrian, in, in, in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. I'm going to take some of them riches and some of that gold that my master refused to take. Why? Because Elijah wanted God to get all of the credit and the glory and not himself. That is why Elijah refused to take any of his riches because he wanted this man to give his God the credit and the glory. Verse 21. So Gehazi followed after Naaman and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariots to meet him and said, all is well. Look at verse 22. And he said, all is well, my master had sent me saying, behold, uh, even now there, there uh, be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophet. Give them, I pray thee, a tale of silver and two changes of garments. I'm not going to read all that. I got to scroll down. I got to save time. So he 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 lied to Naaman, got the gold. Let's go to verse 24. And when he came to the tower, he took them in verse 24. He took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house, and he let he let the men go. There was so much gold and riches, he had to have men to help him go take it to this tower to stash it. Now look at verse 25. But he went in and stood before his master. So after Gehazi stashed his money and his gold and his riches that he stole and lied and said that his master wanted and changed his mind, his master, his teacher, Elijah, the prophet said unto him, verse 25, whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, thy servant went nowhither. I ain't went nowhere. So Gehazi lied to Elijah and told him he ain't went nowhere. But look at verse 26. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? It is time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants. So Elijah was saying, Look here, man, you're lying to me because I saw everything you did and said in the spirit. I saw you. You're lying to me. Now, brother chief priest, and to all of Israel, all of the world, I want you guys to listen to your bishop, your supreme bishop, who has taken over the Israelite, the global Israelite movement in the name of black Jesus, East Yeshua. Everybody take note. And when I finish tonight, you're going to jump ship from your leaders who refuse to apologize to you for teaching you this dumbassness and these lies and you're going to join and become a righteous, knowledgeable Israelite, Israelite by following the leadership of Bishop Black Jesus Minister, the number one Israelite teacher on the planet. Verse 27, what does it say? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman. We just got to read about leprosy earlier. The leprosy of Moses that he had in his hand, the leprosy of Miriam. And what color is leprosy? What is the result of, of leprosy? The color, the color is white. It's not red, chief priest. It's not red, Israel. <clears throat> the leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto what? Thy seed forever. My God, chief priest and Israel all over the world, global Israel all over the world. Do y'all see this? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and thy seed. How long, God? Forever. Do you see that, son? That? I see it. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. What was his color? Was it red as snow? It was white as snow, chief priest. Naaman had color, just like Miriam did. Five minutes, Naaman, five minutes. Naaman had color. Just like uh, 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 Moses did. And he lost his color and he became white. And so not only was Naaman cursed white, y'all, who else was cursed, chief priest? Who else was cursed, Israel, all over the world? Who else was cursed with white skin, which is a, which is a curse and which is a symbol of eternal shame? 
it was his children, y'all. Unto thy seed, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, Gehazi, and unto thy seed, your children, forever. So, Sarnetta, so a uh, chief priest and everybody all over the world. The Bible just said forever. So who are the people that fit this description that exists today who descended from Gehazi? White people. <laughs> oh, my God, chief priest and brother in Israel all over the world. Brothers and sisters, let's keep it moving. Brothers and sisters. I, you know, I, I was going to share that, but I don't think I have time about who Edom is. But let me just read the last paragraph of this right here. This is this is in Wikipedia. Let me read the rest, the last paragraph. The Edomites, brothers and sisters, or Israel became Israel. Edomites became Israel. Uh, let me see if I got time to read that. Let me, let me here we go right here. Let me read this one paragraph. Once pushed out of their territory, the Edomites settled. Okay, no, let me go up here. The Edomites are related to several ancient sources, including Tanakh. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I, I, I don't have enough time. Let me go. Brothers and sisters. Three minutes. Three minutes. Here's the timeline. The time, here's when Abraham was born. Here's when Jacob and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and, and Esau was born, around 2006 B.C. All right? Now, this timeline goes all the way back to 6,500 6, B.C. So Jacob and, and, and Esau was born around 2006 B.C. All right? Let's keep it moving. We're going to back it up. So brothers and sisters, here we go. Where am I going? Uh, uh, what was I supposed to show you guys? I was supposed to show you. Let me stop the time. Just say it. Yeah, yeah. Stop my time. Stop my time. You got two minutes and 22 seconds remaining. Yeah, dang it. Uh, what was that? Where did I put that to? Okay, not that. Where is it? Um. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> My silly self. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Uh, just about. Just about. Let me. Let me. Let me pull it. Cause I think. Let me see. Did I miss it? Um. Uh, where is it? Okay, yeah, here we go. Here we go. All right. So, Netta, I'm about to start my time. Okay, uh, let me pull it up. Let me click it. Let me what is you getting ready to play, man? Oh, no, this is not a video, bro. This this is not a video. Not a video. Okay. I'm just clicking that link to pull it up on the screen. All right. Okay. Time resume. Uh, okay, thank you. Brothers and sisters, right here on my Facebook page, and you guys can go to these links. The Smithsonian, here's how Europeans quickly develop white skin. The life science.com 7,000 years ago, human human bones the, uh, the, uh, 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 have been found that declare that white skin and blue eyes occurred 7,000 years ago, including the Smithsonian 7,000 or 7,000, 7,700 years ago. Also, uh, uh, how Europeans got their white skin, independent a uh, 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 magazine uh, uh, company, UK. Uh, uh, and the 7,000 year old human bones uh, that prove blonde hair and white skin, brothers and sisters, y'all can y'all can see this. I, I, I don't have time to keep reading. White skin developed. White skin developed. Y'all y'all can see this. Let me go ahead and move fast. So right here, I pull up one of them, and it says, "What? This is from the Smithsonian. Here's how Europeans quickly evolved lighter skin. White people." Chief priests have been around since 7,700 years ago, 8,000 years ago uh, uh, from this time, which would be equivalent to 6,500 years on this time scale. On this time scale, chief priests. So that means if Jacob or uh, uh, Esau were born in 2006 BC, white people existed way back here, 6,500 BC. So, brothers and sisters, Esau, Edom cannot be the father of white people because what? White people existed 6,500 years ago. And you guys can read this article here that proves, and I don't have time to read it, that proves and says that white skin, and they found bones, and they, and they were able to pull, gene, uh, 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 pull genetics from these bones, and, 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 these, and these bones in the, in the genes 
prove that white skin and blonde hair developed in, in Europeans 7,700 years ago, 8,000 years ago, which is equivalent to the timeline here of 6,500 years ago in 6,500 BC, almost 5,000 years before Jacob and Esau was born. How much time I got? None. Thank you, bro. <laughs> All right, let me share that screen. Okay, I'm going to give you um, Gorilla Hebrew. Unshare your screen, Black Jesus. I'm going to give you Gorilla Hebrew. If you were smart, brother, you would have been writing down your rebuttals or typing down your rebuttals. You now have five minutes. And as he's going, Black Jesus, if you're smart, you'll be writing down your rebuttals and your two questions that you're going to ask him. So, Gorilla Hebrew, <clears throat> hey, yo, you know what? Notice I haven't been coughing lately, y'all. That's the first time I coughed in about a couple of weeks. My oh, cough great. is going away. So, man, it's going away. It's going away. So, uh, Black Jesus, I mean, uh, Gorilla Hebrew, you got five minutes in your rebuttal round. Time will begin when you start. Yes, sir. So, again, all praises to you. How about Shimmy Awashai? Um. It's unfortunate that we are uh, witnessing our brother who clearly is not listening or paying attention, um, which would explain why he really hasn't forwarded any rebuttals to any of the points that I've made. Um, he's attempted to build and attack straw mans um, and his lack of establishing a viable antithesis is what I always call a virtual forfeiture. All right. Black Jesus minister has virtually forfeited this debate every time he has had the ability to speak um according to the bible uh the flood that killed everybody but eight people was five thousand years ago so your sources about white people existing seven thousand years ago contradict your god and the bible that we're debating so you can have those sources but you have them at the expense of your theology brother black jesus minister um, and I don't think you would make that choice. So it's interesting that you would utilize such contradictory argumentation, um, a demonstration of desperation. Let's go back to my um, presentation. So like I didn't, I didn't mean to rhyme all that. Good Lord. Uh, going back to my presentation, Edom in prophecy. Uh, uh, we could my screen's being shared. So I, okay, all praises. Um, we can see here Lamentations four and twenty two. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. The Israelites' punishment is over, right? He will no more carry thee away into captivity. We're not going to go into captivity anymore, according to this prophecy, after this. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. If we're the Israelites, our captivity under Esau, the Edomites, would be our last. So if black Jesus minister believes we're Israelites, which he does, he would have to agree that either the Edomites are white people or we have another captivity to go into. That means that black Jesus minister thinks the last 500 years of slavery that we've experienced, it isn't enough. Black Jesus minister telling us he is the supreme bishop over the Israelites. He is, he is actually telling us that he is such a horrible supreme bishop that he can't lead us to Christ and out of this captivity that under his leadership, we will be enslaved to an entirely different people group which whom he has yet to identify, which who are the actual Edomites. <laughs> How insane is that, right? Let's keep going. Uh, uh, this is this is from the, Arma the Aramaic Targum to Lamentations 4. So it was basically a breakdown that our people wrote on that uh, aforementioned prophecy in Lamentations 4. Watch this. It says, rejoice and be of good cheer, Constantinople. Where is that at? Turkey, Europe. City of wicked Edom. And identifying the people of Turkey as Edomites. This is what we have done throughout the annals of time. Call those Europeans Edomites. He is disagreeing with the word of God, and he is disagreeing with the history and the traditions of the people that he alleges he descends from, which is built in the land of Armenia. Where is Armenia at? Oh, where the Caucasus Mountains are. With the crowd from the people of Edom. So it says the people in Armenia, the people where the Caucasus Mountains are, are the crowds from the people of Edom. Retribution is about to come up, even you. And the Parkavi will destroy you, and the accursed cup shall pass to you, 
and you shall become drunk and exposed. So we see the Israelites have always looked at the white European people as the descendants of Esau and Edom again. He disagrees with his God. He disagrees with his Bible. He disagrees with his ancestors. And he forwards the belief system of white people. That's what he's actually forwarding, right? So I want to unshare this screen. I want to share something else uh, briefly, Brother Sodnetta. Um, Because he what, what he actually agrees with here is white people. That's what he agrees with. Um, because white people are the ones that told everybody they were Jaffa to hide from their identity. So uh let me try to let this be shared. Okay, let, let's just be shared real quick and I'll end on this. Let's let him hear it from the person that he believes, the white man. His birthright, unquote. Moreover, our tradition tells us that the Edomites are the ancestors of the Romans and indeed of all Europeans and the entire Christian world. The Moreover, our tradition tells us that the Edomites are the ancestors of the Romans, and indeed of all Europeans and the entire Christian world. So y'all heard what the white man said. The Edomites are the progenitors of the Europeans, the Romans, and the whole Christian world. With that, again, to Yahweh, go to victory. All praise Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh, Shai. God damn, Black Jesus, you got to come strong, baby. Like we know you could. You got five minutes, Black Jesus, in your rebuttal. Let's get it. Unmute yourself, unmute yourself. And I still need everybody, everybody to donate $5 in the cash app. Y'all holding back. We got some freeloaders in here. Shout out to all of y'all who have done that. But we got some freeloaders in here. Let's go, Jesus. Let's go, Jesus. We want to hear that chant, y'all. You know, he's at home court advantage because he is the HOK champion. So come on, man. Let's get this shit, Jesus. You ready? Uh, can you see my screen? I see your screen. All right. Make sure we got the whole screen. Take my face up. All here. right. I know. I know. All you right. ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Time will stop. All right, brothers and sisters, here are the links that I, I, I had an opportunity to pull up. The scientific links and the scientific information proving that white people existed 7,700 years ago, as far back as 8,000 years ago. Brothers and sisters, are we going to believe science or are we going to believe a, a, a brother by the name of Gorilla Hebrew? See, this is where we go wrong in the conscious community. You would rather believe a brother by the name of Gorilla Hebrew instead of a damn scientist. <laughs> And the world and the white man is ruling the world with science, Gorilla Hebrew. And until we follow the example and the words of the great Marcus Garvey, who said that religion and science are our salvation. Let me say that again for you, Gorilla Hebrew. The great Marcus Garvey said that religion and science are our salvation, Gorilla Hebrew. And to all you brothers and sisters, who love ignorance and street ignorance and jailhouse scholarship. And I'm not talking about my brother. My brother, Gorilla Hebrew, is a victim. He was taught this dumb madness by a bunch of dumb men. Hood rats, hood boogers, hood booger Hebrews. Okay? All right? But Black Jesus Smith is here to elevate y'all. Uh, here's, here's, the, here's the next one. Y'all can go ahead and, and read this on your own. All right? I'm just going to show it for a few seconds. Let me go to the next one. All right, y'all see that? Europeans got white skin 7,000 years ago. What did this one say? The evolution of skin pigmentation associated variation in West Eurasia. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, CBS News, 7,000-year-old human bone suggests new date for light-skinned genes. Uh, the Independent says how Europeans evolved to have white skin starting from around 8,000 years ago. 8,000 years ago is about 7,000 B.C. or 6,000 B.C., as I showed you in the timeline. But Esau Edom was born around what? 2,300 uh, 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 or 2,100 B.C. Where's that timeline? Where's that? There it is right here. Here is Jacob right here. Jacob and Esau, uh, brother chief priest. Here's Abraham, Isaac, Abraham. Here is 6,500 years ago, bro. 
which is almost 7,000 years ago or 8,000 years ago. So the white race was way back here, not way up here with the birth of Esau and Edom. We heard you, Chief Priest. You lost this debate bad. You lost it already, and it's recorded. You said earlier that you are that you were never saying that Esau was white. You never said that he was red. You said uh, uh, you need to. You all need. To, you all are hung up on color. My brother, he said that the the white race came out of Esau, but now he's backtracking and saying that I never said. He said that that he never said or never taught that Esau was red or white. You lost the debate, man. You lost the debate, bro. Okay. Is Esau the white man, the white race, bro? Stop it, uh, 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 gorilla. You know damn well. You've been teaching for years that Esau was white, brother. Stop it, bro. You lying before the entire world. I've been knowing you for about seven years, man. Stop it, bro. Okay? Now, uh, brothers and sisters, let me read this scientific information. And this is the last article that I share with you guys right here. Here's how Europeans quickly evolved lighter skin. The Smithsonian. We're talking science here, bro. We're not talking street knowledge. We ain't talking about Hood rat, hood booger, jailhouse scholarship over here. Let me know when I got one minute, Sarnetta. How much time I got, Sarnetta? For example, earlier this year, how much time, Sarnetta? The genome sequencing of a hunter gatherer who lived in what is now Spain helped build the case that Europe was home to blue eyed but dark skinned people. This man, however, lived just 7,000 years ago. The researchers write that their analysis suggests that the light skin was not yet widespread and ubiquitous in Europe at the time. Earlier work done with the genes of, of 83 people, with the genes of 83 people, not one, two, or three, 83 people in the new study supported by linguistic evidence also shows that populations in Europe about 8,000 years ago would have been mixed and not diverse. The study adds to the growing pile of evidence Gibbons reported that the researchers found that Europeans probably could, couldn't have digested milk until about 4,300 years ago and the story of skin pigmentation is complex, she writes. Yeah. And then, I think I ran out of time. Uh, but anyway, y'all can read the rest of this right here. 7,700 years ago. 7,700 years ago is when they discovered white skin and blue eyes. Thank you very much. All right, we're in the phase now of the question and answer period. Gorilla Hebrew, you have the first um, question for Black Jesus Minister. Black Jesus Minister, you have a minute to answer the question. A minute. Let's go. All right, peace, brother. Uh, my first question is, who are the Edomites today? Uh, according to history... And according to Deuteronomy 23 and 7, and according to the Bible, the Edomites, the Edomites joined uh, after their nation was destroyed by the Babylonians and by Arab nations, they joined on to Israel and they became the nation of Israel in Judea, in southern Israel. Mm -hmm. So we and you Israelites, especially you light-skinned Israelites, because y'all love to call the Edomites white, all right? That they became the nation of Israel, and they took and they became uh, they took on uh, the Jewish faith. As I was going to read earlier, uh, right? You guys can go there. I don't know how much time. Twenty seconds. Y'all can go read this, guys. Let me pull it up real quick. Where is it? Right here. Go here. It is Wikipedia, y'all. Everybody go to Wikipedia and pull up Edom and read paragraph one, two, and three, and you will see that it says right here that uh, that the, that the Edom when the when the country was destroyed that they became. Uh, uh, with the nation of Israel, because they were, their brothers, they were their brothers and sisters anyway. All right, Black Jesus Minister, you can ask your question. All right, uh, let me pull up my scripture real quick. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is it. Okay, I'm showing my screen. Because I want everybody to see this. Share. All right. Uh, 
Brother Hebrew, this is my screen. I'm sharing. This is my. Where is that thing? Where is? It? Okay, is this it? Yeah. No, no. Dang it. Where is it? Not the timeline. I thought I just had it. Okay. There it is. No, no, no. That's not it. Okay. There it is. Okay. All right. Can y'all see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Gorilla Hebrew, yes, regarding sir. the curse of Gehazi from God. Through Elijah, the, uh, through Elijah the prophet, it says right here in verse 27, 2 Kings 5, verse 27, the leprosy, therefore, the leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever, which means children. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. Since Naaman was cursed with leprosy and turned white as snow and along with his seed which is his children who are these people who are white as snow today gorilla hebrew that's my question well number one there is absolutely not a single solitary mention of that individual or his children again in the bible or anywhere in history so any answer to that would be an assertion number one number two um, when we actually take a look at the people who call themselves white, as I previously stated, they are not white as snow. That is not their color. We've very well demonstrated that, you know, that they are reddish in color, though they call themselves white. So, number one, there is not enough information to answer your question that exists either biblically or historically. And number two, it's a false question because it has nothing to do with. Uh, with the actual topic of the debate or my argumentation in the debate. And that's all I have. All right. Um, I, I have a second question, right? Yeah, but that's after Gorilla Hebrew. Gorilla okay. Hebrew? All right, no problem. You have your last and final question for uh, Black Jesus Minister. Yeah, Black Jesus Minister, uh, you said the Edomites had amalgamated essentially with the Israelites. Um. I want you to break down for me, exegete second Ezra six and the eighth and ninth verses and explain to me how that makes sense with your answer for who the Edomites are. Can you say the verses again? Second Ezra, the sixth chapter and verses eight and nine. You need time to get it, black Jesus? Yes, I do. And All right, I, get not, it. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to pull up his scripture. I'm going to pull up my scripture to reply to what he said. No, no, no. Right, I, I, but that my, my, my question uh, no, is no, no. for you for sorry, you to sorry, explain. I, that hold on, Black you. Jesus. Listen so you can answer his question. Go ahead, Gorilla. My, my question is for you to answer, break that scripture down. You can't go to any other. My question literally is about that scripture, not about any other scripture. All right. There you go. Uh, what's the scripture again? Second Ezra 6 and the 8th and ninth verse. All right, second address, and uh, that's going to be, uh, you said, uh, uh, verse 6? No, chapter 6, and then the 8th and ninth verses there in the 6th. Okay, chapter. okay, second address, 6. All right, and 8th and ninth verse, and it says, And he said unto me, and he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. Okay. Uh, I believe uh, my interpretation of that is that the world is not the entire world. There are many worlds many uh, 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 uh civilizations all civilizations didn't interact with, with, with everybody all over the world so wherever you were on wherever you were on the planet that was your world okay so for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followed jacob is the beginning of what world not the entire world but the world of israel the nation of israel okay because yes indeed Esau did become an enemy to Israel, and but ultimately Esau joined onto Israel when their nation 
came to an end. So this world is talking about the beginning of the nation of Israel and not the entire world, as you all teach. All right, Black Jesus Minister, your last and final question. All right. Uh, the scripture I'm going to uh, is... Uh, is the one about uh esau okay i'm showing my screen so that i think i'm showing it let me show it again let me pull it up let me pull it up again okay share my screen share all right okay i think i got the right one is that it okay yeah can you see my screen so Can you see my screen, Sonetta? I'm sorry. Can you see my screen? Can you hear me, Sonetta? Can't you see it up and running, brother? No, no, okay, I see it now, brother. When I switch over, Sonetta, I, I can't see it. That's why I'm asking, brother. You got That's glasses. Why. No, brother, you're not understanding. When I, I understand. Switch, Go ahead. I, I know I what you're saying. Screens, yeah, I, it gives I'm, it a second. It gives it a time to come through. I got you. Okay, bro. Uh, again, brother, uh, Gorilla Hebrew... Uh, it says right here, is there anywhere in, in, in the story of Esau and about his birth uh, and that he was read all over, okay, is there anywhere in, his, in this scripture that says that Esau was white? No, and at no point was that my contention and i very clearly articulated that earlier in the debate thank you brother hey hey sometimes um gorilla you could use your time you know you ain't just got to okay. answer you could you could go in and use your time you got a minute if, if, if i if i if i got if i got a minute to use let me go on ahead and no, 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 no. It's because you, oh, you've answered my question, brother. We, we let, me, let me let me ask you what he did. He told uh, me I can use see, my is helping you out, though. That's not good. Sonnet. All right, stop, stop, stop for one minute, Black, Black Jesus. He answered the question. No, bro. listen, brother. He has a minute to answer your question. If he answered your question like, oh, yes or no, he could go into something long as he only have a minute. Okay. It, you can do the same thing. What All are you right. talking it must about? Be on my question. It must be on my question only. Let's go. Yes, sir. Certainly, certainly. If you can share my screen, oh, briefly, man, look at look at the time now, bro. <laughs> oh, you gotta go back. We gotta. I gotta oh get, get my, my God, man! Damn, yeah. like Jesus, you gotta stop doing this, brother. Let me mark. Let me do this, brother. I know. I always have done this. I tell people all the time, brother. You got time. You got. You can go in. You answer the question quick enough. Shit, you might want to attack something else that that you know you forgot to say. Yeah. All right, so go ahead, Gorilla. Answer his question. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, you can share my screen. You share my screen, sir. It's up. All right, yeah, so as I went into earlier, this is how they, when it said he's red like a hairy garment, this is how they dyed it with this blood red dye. And again, it is consistent with the scientific definition or description of how Caucasian children Look at birth. At birth, Caucasian babies are often dull red in color. And again, this is the dye that they would dye the hairy garments with, with blood red. So that is how they looked. Again, right? Just ruddy white. You see he's red in pigmentation. And we see the original people of Europe. And we see them as black people. We see that very clearly. So that's that's all I had. The water side. <laughs> See that, Black Jesus? It wasn't hard. You got to stop doing this, brother. You're showing fear right now, brother. You're the champion, bro. You are the champ over here. Okay, so um, here we go now. We are up for callers to call it in. I want to ask Gorilla Hebrew a question. Because yes, Black Jesus minister, in his first round, he says something profound and powerful. Where does it say because Black Jesus Minister brought it out. Where does it say that um, Esau is the white man? He just said that he was red all over. But where can you find him saying that he is the white man? Mm. Well, that's that's an important question. And that's what I was just going over. You know, these these people, um, the scriptures speak about a covering cast that's put over this whole earth. These people have deceived the whole world. Again, they call people black who are different shades of brown. Right. 
Um, so in understanding that black people aren't black, they're brown and white people are not white. They are red, um, which is why they look like that when they come out of the womb. They look like that when they get off in the sun, when they start showing their emotions, etc. You can see that those rosy deeks and all those various things, because those people, in fact, are not at all white people. They are red people who are playing a game, calling people white because white is synonymous with good and calling another group of people black. And they're trying to make black synonymous with negativity and evil and things of that nature. So so that 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 kind of is my answer to that. All right, peace and black power family. What's your name and where you calling from? Yeah, this is Apostle. Uh, uh, big up uh, Apostle. Yeah. We got Apostle <laughs> in the building. What's going on Apostle, what's your question? Yeah, my question is for black Jesus. I want to know if he can pull up that article that he cited from Wikipedia that talked about uh, Esau becoming Israel. Because I want to make it clear who they're talking about when they talk about that article, who they look at as Israel today. Who is Israel today? Are they talking about the so-called Negro? Or are they talking about the Ashkenazi Jew that's in Israel today? Because he is Esau, the Ashkenazi Jew. And I believe your article is also confirming that. That's what your article in Wikipedia is confirming. Because the world does not look at the so-called Negro as Israel. All right, all right. We're gonna let um, Black so Jesus. The article. We're gonna let Listen. Black Jesus Minister answer the question, and if he's smart and on his game, he will knock this question out the park. Black <laughs> Jesus Minister, <laughs> it's on you. All right, thank you, brother. I'm going directly to the, the the Wikipedia link that everybody can go to, and I would invite you all to go there, please. And uh, it's on Wikipedia, and this and this and this is and this is directly in line with Scripture, brother Apostle, and, and brother Chief Priest, Deuteronomy twenty three and seven, Deuteronomy twenty three and seven, Deuteronomy twenty three and seven, uh, uh, brother Apostle, uh, Chief Priest. I can't see the article. Uh, hold on, brother. Hold on. I, I got it up on the screen. I'm going to talk about it right now. Do you see my screen? Yes, we see it. Okay, Deuteronomy 23 and 7 9 says, Do not abhor an Egyptian because you are a stranger in his land. Do not abhor an Edomite because he is thy brother. Why did God give them this law in the book of Deuteronomy when they came, when they first came into the land and established the nation of Israel? Because these Edomites, their brothers and their sisters, were with them when they left Egypt in the Exodus. And they were with them in the in the wilderness for 40 years. And they were with them and part of Israel's army when they took over the land of Canaan under the leadership of Joshua. And God said in verse 8, Deuteronomy 23, verse 8, chief priest, that the children that are born of them, the children that are born of who? Those Egyptians and those Edomites, they shall be, they shall be a, 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 a allowed to enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation. Their grandchildren became full-fledged Israelites and became Israelites. And that's exactly not what the Edomites, this article says. Not the Edomites. Be quiet, be quiet. Let him answer, brother. You got to let him answer. This is exactly what this article is saying right here. Look at look at, uh, uh, look at uh, the, the, second, the second paragraph. Um, the Edomites are related to several ancient sources, including the Tanakh, a list of the Egyptian pharaoh setting from uh, from 12, 15 BC, as well as the Chronicle of Campaign by Ramses III. Archaeological investigation has shown uh, that the nation flourished between 13 and 8th century BC and was destroyed after a period of, de of decline in the 6th century BC by the Babylonians after the fall of the kingdom of Edom. The Edomites were pushed westward towards southern Judea by nomadic tribes coming from the east, among them were the Nabataeans, who first appeared in the historical annals of the 4th century BC and had already established their own kingdom in what was used to be Edom by the first half of the 2nd century BC, 
More recent excavations show that the process of Edomite settlement in the southern parts of the kingdom of Judah and parts of the Negev, which is again southern Judah, down to Timnah, which is Ju Judah, southern Israel. He, start, he started already because the destruction of the kingdom by Nebuchadnezzar in 857, both by peaceful penetration and by military means and taking advantage of the uh, of the already weakened state of Judah. And, then, and I'm not reading the rest of that, but the last part right here says what? Look at this last line right here. During the second century BC, the Edomites were forcibly converted to Judaism by the Hasmonean Jews, by the Hasmoneans, and were incorporated into the Jewish nation, y'all. My God, this thing is over with, y'all. All right, all right. Um, let me throw Black Jesus Minister an alley you. I would have just said, without even reading none of that, I would have answered that question for you, Black Jesus Minister, and saying, before we called Guerrilla Hebrew, we called you to debate the fact. And you said, not all white people are Esau. That right there knocks him out. Because now he's trying to tell you, show us, you know, he's saying now that the white man is Esau. But you know all three of us was on the phone, and he said, not all white people are Esau. Am I right, Apostle? I still stand by that, sir. All right, thank you. I still stand by that. Thank you. So, I still stand by so that. So what's the difference? That's my opinion. Okay. So, what's, I'm going to tell you what's the difference. Let me speak. Let me speak. Let me tell you what the difference is. You got to be quick. I don't know. I got a lot of callers calling them. Go I'm going to be quick. Okay. But see, first I want to respond to his article, okay. which is a commentary. And he know, see, he can pull that shit with other people that don't know better. That's a commentary. That's something that somebody wrote. And he's still talking about modern jewelry that's in Israel today. He's talking about the Ashkenazi Jew. He's talking about Herod. Back in the day when I told you that Herod was a Hasmonean Edomite. Herod was an Edomite. Okay. Thank you, brother. We got to move Rome. forward. Thank you. They're Rome Thank established. You. Thank you, now, brother. We got to move forward. Now, listen. Now, listen. Uh, my opinion of who Esau is and Gorilla's opinion, Gorilla won this debate hands down. Now, if I was debating Gorilla, I would have shown that Esau also took lives of Ishmael. How are Arabs? He took two women from the daughters of Ishmael. I would have showed that. I also would have showed that he also took two wives of the Canaanite people who are also black people. So, the, so, so, so in other words, what you're saying is Esau is also a man of color too, right? What I'm saying, no. What I'm saying no, you is... You just said it. You just I'm saying it this way. What the hell you... I see, said this it line this line, way, sir. I don't care yeah. which way you say it. At the end of the day, at the end of what you're saying is... Esau is also a man of color because we know the Arabs are not um, white, so they are men of color, right or wrong? Sai, Sai, what I said was not all white people right. are Esau. Thank you. And That's I what I'm saying. So in other words, here, here it is again. Here's the question before we hang up. Esau is also a man of color, not just the white man. Check. Esau himself is a man of color. Thank you. Esau himself is a man of color. He's Thank red. You. I'm a bad red. motherfucker with this He's shit, like Jesus. I'll make Kelly. a nigga confess, boy. <laughs> no, I'm not confessing to anything. I don't play with this shit. I'll make a nigga confess. No, that's what he's saying. Stop the bullshit. But anyway, thank you, you Apostle. I appreciate you, bro. Nothing. This is what I've been saying from the beginning. You know I said this because you said I said this. You're not making me confess. Although you got me blue muted. No, no, that's what you do. We hear you, brother. You my life. But anyway, thank no, you. that's what you do. Thank you, brother. Again, you oh, always try to put words in my mouth. I'm trying not to hang up on you. That's the only reason why I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm trying because not to hang up on you, brother. I'm saying thank you. Thank you, brother. You know, stop putting words in my mouth. All right. Thank you, brother. 
You know, and look at your cash app. I did send you five dollars. All right, all right. Thank you for the five dollars, brother. I appreciate you. <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> Hey, everybody, if Possum can send me $5 in the cash app, because he did, I'm looking at it. Everybody throw the $5 up in there. It's just five, man. Come on. So support your brother. All right. Uh, let's get these next callers in here, man. God damn. This, this, is, this is a great debate right here. I love it. I love it. I'm going to put the poll up in a minute, Black Jesus. You might want to close your eyes when you see the poll, baby. You know, uh, brother, you know, damn well, I don't give no damn about no damn pole, bro. All I do is bring the truth and kick ass, brother, all day long, every day, bro. But just, but if I, another, if I win the pole, does that make another, me? Hold on, brother, I'm talking, brother. This was just another Kodak kick ass moment, bro. And I thank you for making it happen, son. Etta, and I thank you, brother, Gorilla Hebrew as well. Let's go. Thank, I thank you, too. But if I win the pole, does that make me the champion? Oh uh, no, brother! You, that you, because we know that you got all your people lined up to call in and to answer these polls, like you always do, bro. You got so a whole what damn, you got a whole damn nation of people, brother. That's so how can somebody be, take your gonna, title, brother? Okay, my brother, brother. I, 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 I um, I, I run alone, bro. I don't have no gang. I don't have no church. I don't have no camp behind me, bro. I'm a beast all by myself, bro. Mm. I by myself have conquered the entire conscious community, brother. Talk about it, I'm black a man. Bad man, brother. All right, hold you on. Know that. <laughs> hold on. For um Judah Cipher, my email is right there. If you're serious, let's make this happen. I know you ain't putting up no 20k, but whatever you're gonna put up, if you're gonna put up some money for the winner, hit me up. My email is in the chat. Hit me up, brother. Send me your number, whatever it is, how you do it, and let's make this thing happen. Put my email in there, y'all. Where my email at? I thought I'd just put it in there. God damn. I thought I'd just put my email in there. Let me put my email in the chat so um, you can hit me up, brother. Peace and Black Power family. What's your name and where you calling from? Yasha Ben Israel calling from the city of Detroit. Okay. You got a question, brother? Yes, I do. Let's get it. All right. Uh, looking at the scripture, right? Right. There are several scriptures in the Bible that vividly describe the children of Israel as black people, B-L-A-C-K. When we get to Esau, we see Esau is described as red, not white. Now, I got my question is if Esau is the white man, what the scripture says he's red, uh, if Esau the white man, and Jacob is the black man. This question for the gorilla Hebrew. My question is, with genetic science that we have today, if Esau is the white man and Jacob is the black man, and, and Jacob and Esau was twin brothers, they can go back and chase DNA 50,000 years. My question is, why do we not have the same genetics at all? If, 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 if we come from the same progenitor, why we do not have the same genes at all? And I need a real scientific answer and not a twisted biblical historical answer. All right, let's hear him out. Let's go. We got a man by the name of Yasha Ben Israel that's talking about 50,000 years of DNA science. This is a brother who is totally ignorant of DNA science if you go mm. and just take an ancestry or my 23 and me dna test they can't tell you a damn thing past seven generations literally they can't tell you anything past seven generations and we're talking about people who were born we're talking about damn near three thousand years ago you can't take a genetic test and link yourself to anybody past the 1800s right now today right so you brother are just ignorant of what you're talking about. Okay. And no, and and no, Jacob. I got a, I got a second question hold on, hold on. too. I'm not, I'm not I'm not done. Jacob is not the black man. Jacob and his descendants are people of color, right? People of various shades of brown. And Esau came out red, as it says, like people who call themselves Caucasian or white call themselves. So make sure when you engage and you ask me questions, it's about what I believe and not about assumption. But go ahead, King. Okay. Now, you, you went through these shades of Israel being brown and this and that. Songs of Solomon, first chapter, 
Five in Hebrew say Shakura Ani, Wanura, Benut, Yisraelim. In pure Hebrew, that says, uh, uh, I am a black and beautiful daughter of the Israelites. Yes. The Shulamite woman city in Israel, she describes herself as black. Okay. Yes. Now you say that this, that they, they can't go back past seven generations and that was ignorant, but the reality is that they're doing it. You know, and I'm out of here. They're doing it. You say they can't do it, and they're doing it, and they're doing it. You can go on. I've taken, I've taken DNA oh, tests, so I know. I know they can't go back. The whole plethora of us taking DNA tests, and, it, and, it's being, and it's being tested, and it's going way back, way beyond Yasha, seven generations. Yasha, and that is the fact. Yasha, Yasha, can I ask you something, brother? Have you taken a DNA test? Yasha, you there, brother? No, nah, it's not Yasha. It's someone else, bro. All right, Yasha hung up. Okay. Peace and Black okay. Pie family. What's your name? <coughs> What's your name? What you call <laughs> Antoine. I'm calling from Oakland, California. What's so, going on, so Antoine? My question, is, my question is to either one of them, right? I uh, I want to know, in what year can you guys give like an, a, a, a close date to when the Bible was composed all at once? Uh-oh. Anybody? Hello? You want to give it to me? It don't Black matter. Jesus, Either one of y'all, because y'all both believe in it. Black Jesus froze up. What's up? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. I'm here. I'm here, brother. Um, I, I can't give you an exact date off the top of my head, dear brother. But it would have to. Con it would have to be concluded sometime after the death of Jesus Christ, because the because the souls of the Old Testament and the New, and we do know that there were books written about the life and time of Jesus Christ well after his death, a couple of hundred years after his death. Now, when all of the books were, were finished and, and compiled, of his disciples finished writing their versions of their experience with Jesus, those who knew him personally and those who did not, uh, uh, those would all be different separate, separate dates. So when they were all combined together, I don't know, but the oldest Bible is the Ethiopian Bible, and the beginning and of, what the, year uh, of the Christian religion is the top. I, I don't know. I don't know the years, brother. You can look it up. And and the oldest church, okay. uh, the first church worldwide. Church, hold on, brother. The first worldwide church was uh, the African Egyptian Coptic so Church. Yeah. Shikari Corey, why? You... Uh, all right. Uh, 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 all right. Now, can I say something? What were they writing on? Because the first printing machines where they were able to predict pr print and mass production was built in 1440. So what were they writing on? Stone? They were passing around stone Bibles? They were writing on uh, parchment. Brother, what were they brother. writing on? They, they, they're writing on parchment, brother. I mean, let's be serious here. What type of question is that? Okay, I, so I, they were mass producing. No, 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 they weren't mass producing Bible. But Bibles did not get mass producing. Brother, 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 let me let me help you out. Bibles did not get mass produced until, until King James made the edict in 1611. That's when Bibles, that was the whole purpose of the King James Version existing, to translate it into a common language and to mass produce it and to put it in the hands of common people. Prior to that, Bibles were not mass produced. So then, so my question is then, with all of these different guys in the the Bible, with all of these different books, Lewis, Peter, Paul, all of these. So then, where were the where, so where were the people learning from then at that point of time? If the Bible wasn't all one, what were the people supposed to be living by? Just word of mouth? No, no brother, you're 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 kind of convoluting things. There was something called synagogues. Synagogues had scrolls in them, mm -hmm. right? So people could go to the synagogue and hear the scrolls be read and taught of and read it themselves, but they just didn't have it in their pocket or on an app or at their house. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. No problem, King. All right. Yeah, I just want to let y'all know that um, those were good questions. And y'all in the chat room saying, oh, this man is simple. No, he's not. Those were good questions. You was the simple one. And Gorilla yeah, he, he, answered he, it in, in good. He answered the question. See, it, Khalid always taught us, never be afraid of a question that is asked. Hopefully that the answer could be even better than the question. Mm. And Gorilla Hebrew answered a good-ass question. 
So that was a good ass hard question to me. And uh, of course, Black Jesus Minister as well. So let's get these callers in y'all unless we ready to go, man. We ready to end this shit and get these polls up and let's see if Black Jesus Minister start crying in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but um, we gonna see. But Black Jesus Minister, to me, I think he did his thing. I think he held it down, but hey, who am I? It's up to the people, man. It's up to the people. I want to say thank you to everybody who showed love and supported me. And a lot of brothers and sisters out there showed some love. So um, in closing, this is your closing, Black Jesus in um, Guerrilla Hebrew. You got two minutes in your closing argument. Okay. All right. Go ahead, brother. Um, you got closing first. Okay. Well, Guerrilla first Hebrew. First and foremost, again, I just want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. I, uh, you know, prayerfully hope that this was a very edifying debate. Um, that that the audience out there learned some new things in regards to this topic, and uh, you know, those who may have been on the fence were uh, come in the way of truth, as well as those of us who are already of this school of thought of 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 who the Edomites are. Um, that the, there's a few more bullet points up in the arsenal um, to utilize an argumentation as you experience it in your travels and your walk and your debates, etc. Um, I just want to give a, a special shout out again to the Most High, His Only Begotten Son. All, always a special shout out to my brother, Sonetta. Special pro, uh, shout out to my brother, Black Jesus Minister. Shout out to my brother, Captain Zariak. Everybody out there, everybody that came through and um, supported. I want to plug my brand your your number one source of hebrew israelite streetwear urban gorilla that's u-r-b-n g-r-l-a dot com all oh, this is one of the pieces right there this micah five and eight shirt right and several other apparel up there also follow me on all social platforms g-r-l-a hebrew instagram uh uh what is it clubhouse all the all the stuff i'm on there gorilla hebrew um urbangrilla.com and also subscribe to our youtube channel sakari that's s-i-c-a-r-i-i -I. type that in subscribe to sakari subscribe to deacon destruction mode and uh subscribe to the urban gorilla youtube channel as well you are being grla um again just the water to everybody and all praises to you how about shimmy esau is emphatically the father of the white race shalom all right black jesus minister close out yeah, yeah thank you very much can you hear me sonetta loud and clear yeah when i finish my two minutes let's let's roll out with that funny video that i wanted to play earlier but anyway uh brothers and sisters thank you all very much gorilla hebrew thank you so much sonetta studios black news 102 the hok family thank you all very much for attending and helping bring together a very exciting and informative debate uh let me shout out to my crew that's saying hello to you, Sonetta, and the HOK family from Clubhouse. Let me shout out everybody in Clubhouse and to my dear brother, the CEO of the Voltron crew, the CEO of the Clubhouse Voltron crew, the brother Ghetto President, the president of the Ghetto, Sister Stephanie, Brother Yashida, Visionary 10150, uh, Brother The, Brother Trill, Brother Laron Campbell, uh, Brother Havenshaw, and Malak and everybody else who's in this room, who's who uh, who I don't have time to mention. Thank all of you for being here, uh, brother Sonetta. All my people over here on Clubhouse, they love you and they follow you. And again, we on behalf of Voltron Crew and Clubhouse, we thank you. And so, brother, whenever you can, let me uh, let me play this funny video so we can go out with a laugh. Hold up, hold up! Before you play that funny video, yeah, I got one last caller. That would like to ask a question. Let's go. One last caller. Let's go, caller. Call it in. I'm waiting on you to give me them last four digits. I'm waiting on you to give me them last four digits. You probably did. It hey, just my, went my, up my, so my fast. My people want to say hi to you, brother Ghetto. If you if you can't unmute your mic while he's waiting for that call. And how let Sarnetta. Unmute your mic. Sarnetta, Ghetto President. Peace, peace, brother. Peace, peace, fam. Anybody else? All right, let's get this caller mic. in. All right, Brother Ghetto, thank you, man. Brother Sonetta, this is a bad boy right here, bro. This is a bad boy, you hear me? 
and I've been bragging about him a couple of times, but we're going to bring him, we're going to introduce him to the family, bro. All right. Hello. Peace yes, and Black Power good. family, you on the show. Sonetta, what's happening, brother? You got your question? Yes, sir. All right, let's get it. Let's go. All right, thank you. So this is for Gorilla Hebrew. All right. Uh, my question is, the Israelites are the chosen people, uh, according to the Bible. So then what's the purpose of the rest of the people on the planet? Mm, another good question. Real good question. Yeah. 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 So very, very simply, uh, I referenced earlier a scripture in second Ezra, the sixth chapter, and it tells you that the world was made for the sake of Israel. Right. You got that for me? Let me see it. Let me read it aloud. What verse here? Six and what the world was made for our sakes. Fifty five. Yep. Boom. Uh, second Ezra six and fifty five. All this I, I have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Because thou madest the world for our sakes, right? So everything and everyone in the world was made for the enjoyment and for the to serve the nation of Israel. Wow. All right. All right. That's, sad, brother. Brother. That's, 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 that's one West doctrine for you, bro. I mean, I, I just read the Bible. I read the Bible. <laughs> Oh, uh, brother, but you ain't been ready, right? You ain't ready, right, bro? That's why you <laughs> running around here talking about Esau's the white man, bro. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, let's go, Black Jesus. You ready? Oh, uh, closing hold on, out. My man wants to say something to you real quick. Hold on, go ahead, go ahead, ghetto. I just wanted to say, if you want these these uh, fake Hebrew Israelites you got on your show, man, like this brother Gorilla Hebrew and so forth. All right, never mind, never mind, brother. We ain't trying to hear that. All we right, we're well, trying to hear none of that, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right, none of that brother. You got to come out, we gonna show your face, brother. stop being a punk, come out so we can see you, brother. Talk you about it. And you talk talk about we, it. Ain't, we ain't no internet gangster Hebrews. He on coming. Here, brother. He coming. Show your ass up, come on here with Black Jesus, and show your damn face. All right. All right, come on, come on, Jesus. You ready? All right, let's go. Brothers and sisters, thank y'all very much. Here's a little chuckle. Here's a little laugh at the expense of our captain, the Captain Tazariak, brothers and sisters. Oh, Show the whole it. damn screen, son. Netta. Show the whole damn screen. <laughs> and uh, 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 and brother Gorilla Hebrew, I think you should have took Tazariak's advice. Let's see if you should have took his advice. Can you see my screen, son? Netta? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Corey, why you attract your message, man? Man. Oh, no, I can't see you. Lucky I can't see your message you attract. I would like to see what you attracted. Shalom uh, to my sister, Tharatha Zai. Can't be watching the debate later on Saturday. Gorilla Hebrew debating Black Jesus minister? <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla Hebrew debating Black Jesus minister? <laughs> Gorilla Hebrew debating Black Jesus minister. <laughs> Black Jesus funny as a motherfucker. That's not true. Gorilla Hebrew is not debating Black. I'm gonna text Gorilla Hebrew and see if he's actually debating Black Jesus minister. I'm gonna call. Let me see if I get signed in on the phone. I know it's eight thirty, but I'm about to see if I can get signed Black Jesus on the phone. I mean, I'm Black Jesus signed in. We're gonna call him early in the morning. I'm gonna see if he pick up. I can't believe Gorilla Hebrew is debating black. I don't think that's true. I'm going to text Gorilla Hebrew right now. Let me text him. Shalom, are you debating? I know something about to say. Shalom, are you debating black Jesus? <laughs> Shalom, let me text him. Shalom, are you debating feet. Turn left. Turn black Gorilla. Jesus minister? <laughs> Jesus? Damn, Captain, look at the right. road, nigga. All right, so Captain, I roll. <laughs> nah, he he ain't driving. He ain't driving. Please don't do it. Oh, Gorilla, if you out there, man, just please don't do it. Find, you know, <laughs> yeah. say you had to take a cat out the tree. Say you had to fucking. 
go to Walmart, anything that's disrespectful to black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> really, if you out there, please don't do it. Find, you know, something. Say you had to take a cat out the tree. <laughs> Say you had to fucking go to Walmart, anything that's disrespectful to black Jesus. <laughs> please don't do it. <laughs> really, if you out there, man, just please don't do it. Find, you know, something. Say you had to take a cat out the tree. Say you had to fucking go to Walmart. Anything that's disrespectful to black Jesus. I'm not being disrespectful to uh, the real Hebrew when I'm saying that. Just any anybody. Oh. Wow. <laughs> he said he is. Oh, wow. Why? <laughs> so the years, just come Captain up with something. funny as shit. Gorilla, just come up. Say, say you bought a pair of sneakers and it was a size 10, but you're a size 11, and you can just something disrespectful to black G. <laughs> I just hope you're not. I just hope it don't happen. <laughs> so. Hey road, yo, road, I, I wish road, you would have gave me this video. I would have, I would have did something with it at the beginning. Ignorant. We're about to be real, righteously ignorant down here. All right, we get it, we get it. That's enough, brother. All right, thank you, brother. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got I'm Captain Tazario calling in. And I wish, I wish you would have gave me this video earlier, Black G. That's really funny. <laughs> Captain, you on the line. Down here. I appreciate it. I don't know why I'm still being talked about when this debate is between Black Jesus and Gorilla Hebrew. And if you listen to it, I say I'm not being disrespectful to Gorilla Hebrew. I'm being disrespectful to Black Jesus. Right. Because with all that, with all that information Gorilla Hebrew brought forth historically and biblically, he never refuted none of the points that he made not one mm. the only the only thing he did was teach off subject when you have a debate if black jesus brings out information gorilla he has to answer it which he did but gorilla he brought out information that black jesus did not answer it and that's why i said black jesus excuse me gorilla he was just say telling me you gotta take a cat out of tree because gorilla he wasted when I'm saying wasted, not in the sense of the information that he put forth for the people to watch, but in the sense of debating someone like Black Jesus, he wasted it because it wasn't a good challenge. It, he could have gave a class and it would have been the same benefit. But the 1.9 people that was listening, 1.9 thousand people that was listening is good for them because they'll never be able to go back and pull the information that really he was brought out. But from a battle standpoint, it wasn't even close. He 30, Black Jesus. So he, he 30 then? 30. Damn. 30. So now that you're here, let me ask you this question and then you could go, Captain. Mm -hmm. And the same question I asked Gorilla Hebrew. All of the One no. West camps are not taking the debate dealing with the 12 tribe chart. Mm -hmm. What is the fear with the Hebrews running from the 12 tribe chart debate, brother? I don't think it's a fear of the 12 tribe chart debate, but I know when you think about debating an opponent, it just has to be beneficial. You have to look at the opponent you're debating, see what fruit you can get from it. Mm -hmm. And so I if you can you. get a good enough fruit from it, like that guy, uh, FOPE, that's now riding your jock strap when he was just trying to trash you, he's really just riding your jock strap because he sees the attention that debates are getting. Okay, Cap did this debate. Now he see Gorilla getting the debate. So now he wants to be involved in that. But he's not somebody befitting of that type of battle. But somebody else might be befitting of that type of battle. It's always about the opponent that you're going to take on. Mm. What can we, not not so much what he's going to ben benefit from it because he's going to get washed. But what can you benefit from it? What can What can I gain if I debate this cat? And so that's usually how it is. So it's not about running from it. It's, nobody's running from it. There's a well, let me tell you this, bro. That. You can see yeah. the numbers that Black Jesus Minister and Gorilla Hebrew brought in tonight. Do you mm -hmm. see Black Jesus Minister as a contender in the 12 tribe chart debate? 
No, nah, this just proved this benefited Gorilla Hebrew more than it benefited Black Jesus. <laughs> it showed it showed Gorilla Hebrew superiority over Black Jesus, which I knew he was gonna have, mm. and it gave him the opportunity to teach his lesson. So the people that might not go on his channel to get his lesson now get to see the lesson on there. So that's the benefit for Gorilla Hebrew. Black Jesus just looked like the same old black Jesus that we all know. He's a champ in his own mind. Damn. But he's not a, no, nobody respects him as a champ. Nobody. Mm. And even you don't respect him as a champ. You just say that to gas him up. Nah, man, him he's a good. champ, brother. Don't listen, do that. I know. That motherfucker you, listen, is a champ of the HOK when it comes so, so to the Hebrews. Think he's a champ. So you think he's still a champ after well, this battle? Well, not too? now because that was, um. When, when, when did you become the champ? With your Jesus. 2019, well, no, no, no. Yeah, that was the 2019 champion. So he ain't the champ today because right. he got another he need another debate. How about you and right, him take a never, uh, how about you and him take a damn debate on the championship? So I don't know. Uh, no hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey brother, why are you still running from FOPE and Quana? You know they've been asking for a debate with you brothers on the 12 tribe chart for a long time, bro. I've even came to your your platform for several years, four or five times, and you like Jesus, you like Jesus. He answered that question a long time. Oh, okay, ago. so yeah, I answered yeah. that question. Yeah. Actually, last week, Black Jesus, if you didn't hear the show, I even said to Quana with the disrespectful things that he said about my general and Kadazai, he would have to make it up with them first before we could have a discussion. He has not reached out to either one of them, so I gave him a quote unquote criteria mm. that he could do to actually do a debate, and he chose not to do it. So when you say Black Jesus is the champ from 2019, he ain't debated or battled no legit is life. He took the, he took and, the title from Polite, brother. Now, you know Polite is a heavyweight at that time. Wait, wait. Okay, but Polite's not an Israelite. You said he battled the top Israelites. Polite is not an Israelite. And Polite got washed by a lot of people. But see, nobody took included. the title, even the Hebrews. You debated no, Polite. Here, here, and nobody here, took the what, title. Only Black Jesus came in and took the title, here, brother. Here's, okay, so now, Polite lost their title when he debated me. When did he ever beat me again to get the title back? Like, what are you talking about? Like, Polite uh, never beat uh, me. Uh, bro. Bro. I oh, took the title. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, you know... Hey, one, one second, I'm going to be done. And heavyweight, when you think about heavyweights, right, if Tyson beats uh, Lewis, I'm just making names. If right. Tyson beats Lewis, Lewis can't then go fight Riddick Bowe, beat Riddick <laughs> Bowe, and then be the damn champion. He got to go and beat Tyson. So Black Jesus can't beat the nigga I beat and then think he's a champion. That don't even make sense logically in heavyweight. In any championship, you can't beat the person that somebody else beat to be that person and then think you're a champ. Well, well, so that's why I said he's a champ. For a long time. Let me respond real quick. Wait, but, I, but, hey, but before you do that, Blake, I'm going to go because I don't want to take no. away from y'all battle. Yeah. I only wanted to call well, in because Captain, he played I'm gonna my video. I'm going to tell you video. this, though, Captain. Polite yeah. been beating up a lot of Israelites. Black Jesus came in and shut him down. And he was but the Polite only one did, that again, was able that's the to same, do it. The same analogy. The same analogy, Sir. No, but Polite wasn't no champ when you debated him. On the phone. Polite didn't have no belt when you debated him. Polite like never go. had a belt. So, so, so again. So, I'm, I'm, am I still there? Yeah, you still here? Okay, so I'm gonna go. I don't want to take away from Gorilla. Gorilla, excellent job. I like in the text messages. I told you he was gonna do All that. Right. All right. Um, you know what I mean? Excellent job. Black Jesus, you need to go back. Like, Black Jesus, the only advice, I'm being serious. When you battle somebody, this is just advice. When you battle somebody, it's not yeah, just about the information that, it's not It's not just about the information that you bring forth. It's about the counters that you counter of the opponent. And if you don't counter what they say, you lose because you're not addressing what they're saying. It shows you're not paying attention. That's my advice. Shalom. Peace. Shalom. All right, all right, so um, all right, so we're gonna end the show right now, and I'm gonna say peace and black power to the family. Peace, Gorilla Hebrew. Peace, brother. Appreciate you. Shalom. All right, peace. Shalom, brother. All right, all right, all right. Yes. Uh, can I respond to Tazariak real quick? Yes, go ahead, brother. Okay, hold on, Squana. Uh, Tazariak, bro. I am the champion because I am the champion, brother, not you. And on my way to becoming the champion, I came to your platform and I asked Sarnetta to debate you many, many times. 
over the years. Yes, you did. Yes, and you did. And Netta told me that you said no. So, brother, uh, you you had an opportunity to debate me. I came and crossed the line four or five times on your platform, challenging you and Compasa. <laughs> brother, don't come up in here now being a, a, a punk and try to and, and try to fool somebody who don't know no damn better. Oh, I sh not black Jesus. I should be the champion. Well, nigga, you should accept my my challenges from me and from Sonetta, which you did not, because you're still running today as you're running from FOPE. And I got Quana on the phone. Go ahead, Quana. Go ahead, Quana. Because Quana, hold on, Quana, hold on, hold on. Because Quana is saying that he has called you, uh, uh, uh brother Tazarek, but you ain't answering the phone. Go ahead, Quana. Yeah, uh, listen. Whatever somebody think I deserve respect or not, right? Tazario me apologize, right? But. And all and Sarnetta, I'm kind of this. This I'm, I, I'm proud of you because you did put the issue up front. But I'm doing this. Uh, uh, I'm feeling a certain, a certain way because Tazaria want us to apologize to speak on issues that he thought that we're wrong, but we can't speak on issues that we think that your jurors is wrong. I'm not going to even bring it up. So what I would just say to you, Tazaria. I don't even think you're worthy. And I know you're going to say, well, you don't think I'm worthy? Why do you think? <laughs> what I'm going to say is, you know how to wax your ass up. You always take a debate that you think you're going to win. Uh, you debate the Christians. You debate the Muslims. You debate the Arabs. You debate everybody under the sun. But you won't bring your black ass over here to debate me. Oh, you're not worthy. Or well, you got to apologize. But you know cowards. You know cowards. Stop the bullshit and bring your ass to the ring with F-O-P-E or sit your black ass down. Because, see, I'm not going to disrespect your generals who come up with all they nonsense. And I'm going to tell you, brother, for real, for real, everybody in the House of Conscious, everybody in the Israelite community, you are the leader of ISUPK or ISUPK. But because you such a suckling, under a man that won't be your own man, I gotta tell you that you are the leader of ISUPK. You are the general. Here you are a captain, but you let your sidekicks come and be a captain before you, Negro. Right? That they got an easy ride before you, Negro. You act like you don't know me. You don't know the phone calls, nigga that we had before you was captain, lie to the most high. Mm. Lie. Remember, we had no conversations before you was a captain. Lie. Because I recorded the shit. So you mm. are the leader of ISPK. But you won't step your black ass. In fact, I don't even want you. You fight for men that can't fight for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You make excuses for men. That's what women do. Mm, mm, mm. That's what you do. Mm. Yo, yo, your hunter won't stand up and say, you know what, uh, Cap, you ain't got to protect me. I'm going to fight for me. Mm -hmm. But he put your ass out there to take this weapon. Now get your ass over here and take this one for FOP on this shot. And only you would def would defend it. Your, this other carcassot won't say shit. My hymen won't say shit. Your honor won't say shit. But Tazaria will, because he's a skip in fashion. He'll do whatever they tell him. When you gonna be your own man and let them be their own man? See, I go and sign that ass all the time. One thing I respect about him, ain't nobody I re defend him. He gonna defend himself. Yep, yep. You damn right. right. You damn right. And he's gonna take up for his woman, his wife, and his children. Yep. He's take all this heat. Yep. When you gonna let them take their heat? But you know what? You don't do it because you kiss ass, nigga. Damn. Me and you one on one on that chart. On, are you a man or you gotta get permission? All the way that all this shit. Are you a man or you a woman? God damn. What you gonna do? Step up to the plate, face the folk, and get fucked up. Damn! What you gonna do? Go <laughs> your one man for permission. My God. Step and fetch. Step and fetch. 
My God. What you going to do? What you can do? Get your ass off the line or accept the debate or, or, or stop selling your bags and body oils. Be a man of God and defend this shit. Me and you. Because you're your hunter ain't going to step up. With his fat you know, ass. Your hunter ain't signing up. You know what your hunter means? <clears throat> and they say they don't believe in John the Baptist. He's a liar. That means your hunter is a liar. He took a name out the liar who y'all said was a liar. How about that? You gonna take up for him again? Or can he take up for himself? No cowards. Take up, let him take up for himself. Oh, you know what? You gonna defend it. Y'all took it out of context. It didn't mean this. It didn't mean that. Ain't nobody ever be talking about dicks or penis. That's your camp. Ain't nobody ever be talking about screwing nobody in the ass. That's your camp. Ain't nobody talking about that but you. All right, hey, Quana. All right, yeah. Quana, you know you will be the uh, underdog in this, and Captain is the heavyweight, and you can look at the chat. The chat is going in on you, man. But well, what did you say? What did you say, Sonetta? I'm, I, I'm just yeah, saying. Think about that. The F-O-P-E, Who you saying with? I got the recording. Repeat it, nigga. What are you, who you saying with? What I said was... I don't believe in the 12 tribe chart myself, but I've always said that I go against Captain Tazoriak many times, and he had proven me wrong many times. So, hey, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. Let, 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 let it be neutral, man. Let, 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 Yo, let I, I don't know. I don't know. But I've always voted against the captain. And he ends up pulling it out. So, hey, 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 hey Quana, we're going to go, bro. We got to go, Quana. All right, okay. Uh, 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 Sarnetta, he said you're a real man, and I, I second that most. Sarnetta, who did you say would win? No, hey, Quana, we're going to leave that alone, Quana. We're going to leave that alone. Who did I say would win? I no, forgot. No, no, Sarnetta, don't even go there. We done. All right, uh, all right, Quana, we're going to get back with you, bro. Thank you very much. All right, so then I'm, I'm ready to end this thing. Thank you for allowing me to come All back. All right, peace and black power, black Jesus. Peace. My God out of here. In the name of black Jesus. Peace, y'all. Love y'all. Take care. All right. All right, so now everybody's in the chat right now. Press one if Captain Tazoriak should ignore Quana and move forward or move on or should he play or should he debate Quana? Press two. If he should debate him, press one if Captain should just ignore that and move forward. Oh shit, the ones is coming in. Oh man, the ones is going in. The ones is like, yo, leave that alone. Looks like the ones are winning. Level. So let me hear you say so. Letter, letter, so. Letter, letter, so. Letter, letter, so. Letter, letter, All right then. Sonetta brings the truth. Black knows one, no two. This is here for me and you. It's black knows one, no two. House of consciousness, make sure you're logging to YouTube. Black man, hold your head up high and black woman, you too. 
Me now go apologize, love up me melanin. Forget them other guys, that's what I'm telling them. Salute the general, never fear the challenge. The gods saw net and stay strapped with the cannon. Don't ever disrespect, so it's best. You pay homage, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. White supremacy, education get abolished. A laptop, a pen, and my pad is my college. Black man cipher, enter at your own risk. Make Europeans bow down on 125th. Sarnetta got the spirit of Nat Turner. Waking up our people that's been miseducated and mass murdered. And it don't matter if you're shot in the clock burners. It's never too late to awake and progress further. As sure as the sunshine and the wind blows, there's therapy for post traumatic slavery syndrome. Sarnetta. I brings the truth Black news 102 This is here for me and you It's Black news 102 House of consciousness Make sure you log into YouTube Black man hold your head up I and black woman you too